<laughs> I'm live. Hey, hey, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Today. It's Wednesday, March 16th. Yeah. My producer Lloyd is great at producing. Sometimes he gets me caught off guard. I was not ready. I was I was doing some last Deep minute inside. reading. I was I was reading what I wanted to what talk about, and Lloyd says, "Hey, I'm ready to go. I need like a a cut next time." All right, I'll shut this one say, down and we'll, we'll no, restart. No, no, oh, okay. no. I think Lloyd kind of likes catching you. Like, he does. Uh, I think that, that could be our thing. Yeah. That could be our thing. Needless to say, welcome back to Mic'd Up. Thank you for joining us. Today is March 16th. Wednesday, March 16th. We got a huge show. We are brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Shout out to all of our sponsors, Lance Beal, Heineken, Dos Equis. <laughs> Sterling Automotive. <laughs> Y'all need to stop laughing and messing me up. We got a huge show. LSU baseball is still hot. Five-game winning streak mm. heading to the weekend. Mm. SEC plate starts today. I was at the game yesterday. Lloyd was at the game yesterday. Got a first-hand look at how good Razelman is. He looks good. We both caught that. Yeah. Did you find those numbers on the year? The they got yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah, we can. We can. We can. We can we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. We have NFL free agency is still hot. Saints are making some big moves. Sign Marcus May. My dog. friend here, Jared Mitchell, thinks that care. Tyron is still in play. He's still in play. Still in play. I hope that he is correct. I don't care. I think Marcus May is a good pickup. I know he's been a little injury prone. Great I think you get him. We can I, keep him healthy. Yeah, yeah, I think he stays healthy. I think we're good. I think we have some opportunity. Obviously, the interviews and stuff with uh, Deshaun Watson are still in play. Teron Armstead's waiting to see if, if Deshaun Watson signs. I think if Deshaun Watson gets traded here, Teron Armstead signs and stays with New Orleans. Obviously, there's a trade. We signed Bradley Roby. It's we. The Saints signed Bradley Roby, which tells me that maybe there's a cornerback in play that's going to go go be traded, possibly. And it's a Sean Watson trade. I don't know. There's a lot of things going going on. MLB, free agency is, is still hot. Schwarber just signs with... Gets out of Boston. Schwarber goes really? to the Phillies. Wow. Yeah, to that's the a, Phillies. That's a great wow. park. That's a great park for him. Great, great team park. for him. DH World. Matt Olson gets signed by the Braves, hometown guy in Atlanta. Signs an eight-year, hundred and sixty-plus million dollar deal. Good for him. It's mm-hmm. a lot of money. He deserves it. Matt Chapman gets traded last night from the A's to. The Toronto Blue Jays, the and we were talking about this. The Blue Jays lineup is stacked. Well, we're gonna get into all of that. I think it's silly. We're gonna get into all of that. There's gonna be a lot. There's a lot of new, a lot of old faces in new places. Gonna be this year. The, the free agency has been hectic and crazy. I think everybody anticipated it being hectic and crazy. It has not disappointed. COVID has to make an appearance. It's made a guest appearance in baseball. Yeah. There's no room yeah. on the roster for COVID. There's no room on the roster for COVID. But COVID has made, tried to force their way onto the roster. Joe Jay, Burrows, Mitch wants, Jay Mitch wants Lloyd to put his swaggy. These are Joe Burrow. Joe, Joe Burrow left, left him here. Yeah, Joe Burrow left him. Uh, yeah. You don't look as good as Joe. No offense. You don't, look as, you don't look as good as Joe Burrow does. I'm just saying. I need new teeth. You need new teeth and you need a lot of money and a visa and a quarterback in the NFL. 15-inch penis. Uh, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> is that documented? That, didn't even, that only took us like three minutes from all you get the <laughs> sex today. <laughs> I know. Is that documented? Was, was that, is that documented? I don't know if it's documented. The hat. The hat, but, yeah. The hat. But, but, yeah. Back to COVID. Yeah. COVID has to force its way on the roster. All New York teams, now we've seen it with Kyrie. We're going to get into a little bit of the Kyrie because my friend here, Jack, <laughs> despises Kyrie. If you can I'm, read, I'm starting to despise the Rams. If, if you can read, if you can read the document right now, I'm like, I'm reading, I'm like, man. Jack hates Kyrie. I, I get it. Hate him. You're a Boston. You're a Boston fan. I understand. <laughs> We're gonna get into that. But COVID is they have the New York have vaccine mandate. If you don't have the vaccine, you cannot play in New York City because that's what they're doing with Kyrie. Well, that means Judge, Stop. all those guys don't have the vaccine. They can't play if they don't get it. They can't go up to Toronto if they don't get it. There's a lot of that going on in Boston right now. There's a lot of guys that don't have vaccinated. They're not vaccinated in Boston. So. As much as we want to, we beat COVID, COVID's over. I think it's over. I think. But COVID doesn't want it to be over, so they're fighting. COVID is fighting and clawing to stay relevant. And they, they are, they well, are. It's right still relevant, not to stay. It's still relevant. Yeah, they are, they are still there. March Madness starts tomorrow. Yesterday. I don't count the, I don't count the games. Johnny Jones. I don't count the playing games. LSU's next respect, head coach. I don't count the playing games. Damn, they was on my course. bracket. There's a reason why you have to, there's a reason why you don't have to turn your bracket <laughs> in until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, you that's a fan. That's it. It's a, 
To I didn't qualify, say I actually like wrote to qualify passes, for all bro, the bracket challenges bracket. and all the tournaments and all the money and all the gifts. You have to turn your bracket in by Thursday at noon, which tells me March Madness doesn't start until tomorrow. Except for tonight. Okay. Bryant plays. No, this is Peter Kiss. Brian? Peter? <laughs> Peter Bryant. Dude. Peter, Peter Kiss. Peter Bryant. Peter Kiss. Have you seen this guy? Uh, who's this? This is a guy that was absolutely showing his ass the last time they played and got into the tournament. No, it was no, unbelievable. He averages 33 a game. He's the NCAA leading scorer. He was doing push-ups on the court. He was doing all sorts of stuff. So the coach pulled him over oh. and said, would you shut the fuck up and play basketball? And he was like, no. And then he drains a three. Yeah. He <laughs> wow. was unbelievable. Wow, that's... Who's he playing for? Brian. 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 I have to check him out. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Bryant. Oh, just speaking of... Big enough. He's hot, hot in the still on the stove, still hot, cooking. Yeah, still cooking. He's sizzling on the <laughs> stove. He's a hot. He's probably the hottest. Free. There's a lot of. There's a lot of big free agents still available. Freddy. Our friend Chad Jones is finally. I'm, I keep checking my phone because I haven't gotten a text. And we got, we got to have in. a round of applause sign for when he walks. Oh, he is coming. Oh, in. should we, we give him the coming. silent treatment? No, no, no. no. Standing oh, up. Okay, standing, We're standing up. Standing up. Standing up. Standing up. He shows up because he finally showed up. This is the third time's a charm. Third, third time's a charm. charm. We got him here. This is going to be an unbelievable interview. Everybody's been asking me where Chad Jones is. What's he doing? We're going to find out all that. I've been, I know where he's at, where he's been. He was at Jay Mitch's engagement party. We had some conversations. Talked to him about baseball. Talked to him about football. Talked to him about everything. Joke around. Chad's a great, great, great time. Um, but let's start with LSU baseball. I think the boys are right in the ship. We talked about a little bit of them on Monday. Thought this past weekend was a great stepping stone. I think that it was a great mental toughness battle for them. That everybody, there's a lot of chatter going on in the outside world about they can't play defense, what's going on, lineup changes, this and that. And they go out this weekend, they take care of business, they beat Bethune Cookman just like they should have. The cookies. And they played a great brand of baseball. They didn't make a ton of errors, they made the plays, they had timely hits. And they broke out on Sunday with a 15 spot, and they looked like the dominant team that we all anticipated them being. Fast forward to last night, they played Tulane at home. Tulane LSU has always have this rivalry in midweeks. Tulane does a good job of beating us. It's always a big game. You always want to beat Tulane. They're a down the road rival. They always, you know, Tulane is probably the historically in Louisiana is probably the second best baseball program in the state. Damn good uniforms. And they look great in their powder blue uniforms. I was there. I was actually, I brought my little nephew and my brother-in-law. We were at the game and all of their <laughs> friends' kids were there. It was like their little little league baseball team. And they sat down the left field line because that's their, most of these guys are two lane guys. And so we were always down the left field line. It was the first time in my entire life I've ever sat down the left field line and watched the game in Alex Box Stadium. So that was kind of cool. And they had, you know, the bullpen guys are going down there. And like, man, I can see how when SEC play starts and stuff gets Heated. hectic and fans start getting wild and it's they're feeling nice and the sun's shining and they're drinking some beer and they're a little what? boozed up. What? I can see how throwing and getting loose in that bullpen is difficult because you are right on top of these guys. And God forbid you make a wild pitch and it goes down to the backstop and you are getting heckled. My little bro, my little four year old nephew was heckling the guy. The guy had mullet. He called him mullet man. That's not a <laughs> heckle. It's a compliment. It's a great hey mullet man. Can I get a baseball? The guy turned around, and laughed. Didn't have a baseball to give him to us. Well, Tulane need to get a bigger budget. Get some baseballs out there. I mean, you are on a baseball pin. field. You need base. You need bullpen balls. Okay. You need to work on that. Whatever. You need the balls. He was. Some nice gentleman fan the fan in the stands gave us a baseball that he had gotten later. So and then you Hudson kept it. was very happy. He was not <laughs> crying anymore. <laughs> and he walked out. He has dipping dots on Wait, his face. He cried? No, he was whining. He was doing like the I want to get what I want whine. You know, how old is he? Do? He's four. Okay, you can still probably he's four. Do that. Old four. enough to learn how to manipulate at this point. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, he knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> old enough he knows to how cry. to cry. <laughs> he knows how to get what he wants, no doubt. <laughs> but back to the game. Wait, hold on. You okay. talked about people getting heckled or like heckling along the first, mm -hmm. first and third base line. Yep. Who was your bullpen catcher? Who was the bullpen catcher for LSU? Do they have? A, they don't have a scholarship. Oh, you talking about the guy from Texas? I don't know. I'm just saying that there's a lot of pressure on those guys. Oh, uh, okay. Did you see the bullpen catcher for Texas? No. He got in trouble. He was in more than trouble. We, we can call yeah, yeah, he was trouble. not. It was not good look by him. So he is the bullpen catcher. He is finishing. The guy goes into the game. He turns around, gets down on a knee, and some guy gives him a flask, and he takes some. He shoots a flask <laughs> in the bullpen. 
The bullpen catcher. He's in trouble? I mean, dude. Yeah, he's in trouble. What do you mean, Lloyd? What do you mean he's in trouble? What do you mean, Lloyd? I think he got kicked off the team. No! Yeah, he's done. Lloyd. Bring him here. What do you mean, Lloyd? <laughs> Lloyd, let's just, let's just flip this around. Let's imagine us watching an LSU football game, and they pan the sideline, and the fifth receiver is on the sideline just <laughs> chucking out of a flask. You can't do that. And I yelled to From the stands. From the stands. From the stands, man. From the stands. He can't do that. Maybe he gets a whiskey deal. What? He's a bullpen catcher. Kentucky he's not on the team. He's a manager. He's a so what are you kicking me off for? Because you can't do that. <laughs> Just make him run sprints. <laughs> you can't do that. Jeez. But what's the Spider-Man say? Lloyd's, hey, he's like legit like. I'm, I'm uh, he's, <laughs> upset. he's upset. <laughs> Lloyd, wants, Lloyd, wants all, Lloyd wants to be able to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it and not be told anything. <laughs> like the four-year-old. That's okay. And Lloyd thinks, Lloyd thinks okay. the Wolfman's catcher is like uh, Buck and Aikman. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 it doesn't work that way. <laughs> what is it? With great power comes great responsibility. With no power comes no responsibility. If you're the bullpen so you don't want any power. power. Oh my God. No, I don't. Yeah. I'm just happy to be there. You're just a locker room guy. Get the uni on, Lord. You can't be drinking with the uni What a mentality. What a mentality that is. Wait, he didn't have the uniform on. Yeah, hey, if, if you were the bullpen <laughs> catcher. Uni. If you were the bullpen up. catcher of a, of a team, <laughs> you'd probably be like the most slagged out. You'd have all, you'd have the arm sleeve. Pip vipers. You'd have, oh, you'd have the visor on his <laughs> pictures. Six, one arm sleeve, six wrist You'd have the visor with the arm black. black. Have the, the, yeah, the, 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 the catcher's sheet. mask with the Oakley's in oh, the mask. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No sun. The deep yeah, he'd have the backwards, he'd have the skull cap backwards the whole game. Definitely so he gets have the with the mask on top, just like waiting like this, like waiting for the call. Oh yeah, hands on the head. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. The move. He's sitting, kind of sitting on the ledge, like kind of looking at the people, like, hey, yeah, yeah this is me. His, his yeah. name embroidered into the neck collar. Chains <laughs> out, <laughs> chains <laughs> out, no doubt. Like that, that's exactly how you would be. But and then I would sit on the bucket as opposed to actually squatting. <laughs> <laughs> the knee savers. The knee savers. Not until, slaggy. Until necessary. one hits you and you're just like, you know what? This fucking ain't getting it for me. Until you yeah. get thumbed the one good time, you're like, you know what? Oh, dude. No, no more getting of this. Getting thumbed is no joke. No joke. I had to do it. So when I was, in 2017, I was, when I was in Detroit, I was platooning with the other center fielder as a, so if there's a left field amount, I was starting. If there's a right field amount, he was a right fielder. And... It was a righty on the mound, so I wasn't starting. Well, we had the catcher we had was catching. Starting catcher was catching, and the other catcher was DHing. And the, the bullpen catcher was in the bullpen warming up the pitchers. So we didn't have anybody to warm up the pitcher in between innings. So Brad Austin turns to me and says, hey, my, hey, hey, hey Tuck, go, uh, go warm him up. I'm like, smile oh, or no smile? No. I was like, what? He goes, yeah, we'll warm him up. And so he, like, because Austin is a very stone-faced guy, right? So, like, he doesn't really, like, and he know I can, I, he liked me, and, like, he kind of gave a little grin, but, like, not really. I'm like, oh, my God. So, like, I take the mask, <laughs> I put it on there, and, yeah, like, man, I'm gone. And it's uh, Daniel Norris. He's a lefty, th- off, oh, like, God, getting loose. Yeah. And he's not easy to catch. Like, he was cutting balls, and he balls, and he threw a ball, and I, like, didn't know how to move with it, so like I cut my, I moved my arm, and I'm talking about. Thank God, it I caught it, but I could feel like my thumb wanting to like give, but I caught it. If this ball goes another about two centimeters lower, I break my thumb, and then I don't, oh, get, I don't get, I don't get to play. Yeah, cool joke, Brad. You so then the other pitchers, out, the other pitchers that were my friends, that would come in like that game. They would come out the bullpen and they would just laugh and like uh, so Justin Wilson, who's another lefty but throws upper 90s and had one of those like ride fastballs and so he like sees me he like winks at me he's like don't worry and like he was just throwing nice easy like right at my mask so like, I couldn't over. miss it and then the catcher would get in I'm doing whatever I'm like thank god but dude that's a lot of pressure it's scary. so one good thing about being left handed bro they never, never look ask. at you to do that yeah <laughs> they have a bet for you exactly a lot of pressure on that well cause I saw a pass by uh, pass ball go by yesterday really and it like went, got got by the catcher into the game, like it's so they had to like, and I was like, "Ooh, this guy's wearing just the pads, no jersey." That's what I was saying. So he's chilling. Oh, and then the next pitch, you could tell the guy spikes a curveball. He gets on all fours, domes it up, and like <laughs> throws oh, see, it. That's different. Though. That's in the bullpen. I'm doing this on the field. So like, this I have just this on the field at LSU. This is last night. Yeah, but like on like in the gameplay, I'm talking about like. In between innings, not on the bullpen. Oh no, oh. this was like during the game. Yeah, no, I'm not. In the, like, I'm talking about like, hey, the guy, the catcher makes the last out. He goes back into the dugout. He has to get his stuff ready. You need someone to go oh, warm the, the pitcher. I'm yeah. on the field, so I only have the mask on and the mitt. I don't have any gear on. Like, mm. I'm, I have turfs on. Like, I'm not. 
You know, like I'm not, yeah, 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 right. So I'm just making sure I catch the ball and get it back to the pitcher. It's a very nerve-wracking thing. That is. But back to the game. Back to the schedule program. Tigers won 7-5. I know, I know everybody's not excited about the game because they didn't really hit a bunch of homers. They didn't really do anything crazy. To me, it showed me a lot about where this team had, where the team is now going into the SEC play. They were down 2-0 to start the game early, battled back, had some timely hits. They didn't have a ton of hits, but they had timely hits. They had guys in scoring position. They had bases loaded, getting on base, base hits, runs, RBIs. Like those are the things that win the games. And then you get to the oppor- you get the opportunity of okay, you have the lead. Lead. You need to close it out. Reiselman comes in. Reiselman comes in, and he goes two and a third innings, strikes out six. <laughs> and this guy is saying, hey. I'm dropping the number one down. I'm throwing you the old terminator. If you can hit it, you can name it. Ain't nobody named it because nobody sniffed it. He was 95 to 98, and he was throwing absolute BBs. And these guys did not. He didn't throw a lot of pitches. 10 I think 35 pitches. He can we threw. sample these numbers really? 10 innings pitched, 10 20 innings strikeouts, pitched. not a single run given up. How many, mm. how many walks? I think two. <laughs> <laughs> he walked a guy last night that should have been a strikeout. I, think, I thought it was a strike three that he didn't. Two. The call. two walks. Hey, 10 innings, so 10 20 innings 20 two walks, 20 two Ks. Walks. So two. I'll take that. Yes. That plays. Two strikeouts per, in, per inning. <laughs> That's not. How many innings did he pitch yesterday? Two? Two and a third. He only has 10 on the, in the, or the season. He's a weapon. He's there two. So think about this. I think he had he six threw, strikeouts yesterday. He had six. So he threw he two and a third. Eight. He threw two and a third innings yesterday. He threw three innings at the last outing. So five and a third innings his last two outings, 13 strikeouts. Jesus. And he's only throwing fastballs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that a problem? No. For who? For the batter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For who? Yeah. Well, no, we, were, we were talking yesterday a little bit, like, while we were both – while he was leaving and I was going in. He got the first five. I got the last four. And he was like, man, Russell Where were you coming thought, from, Lloyd? I was going to say last uh, five. I was like, it's good. It's good catch. Up. Where were you coming from? Work. <laughs> I was finishing up. Work, 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 work. Up, and then I was like, oh, I have to get to the game because work, work. this is work, too. <laughs> and so I was walking in, and you were talking about Rosalind throws cheese balls. And I was like, okay, I want to watch it, but like, I'll pay attention. And where we got is like, he's only throwing fastballs. And he said the same thing, like, he doesn't have another pitch. And is, what's the number of in college baseball that that's, if you're throwing above this, and it's fine, you only need a fastball? Look, you have a lot of clutch. I mean, you have a lot of closers in, in Major League Baseball that only throw fastball. But they have so, like I'll say I'll say this. Chapman. Listen, listen. I'll say he, this. He gets cute. You got to understand, we're not dealing with professional hitters, right? right? And two, if they ain't hitting it and they're not catching up to it, I mean, keep throwing it until somebody starts. No until doubt. somebody gets on it, there, there's no real like. That's like, one thing. Not, that's one thing pitchers try to do. They try to like trick you a little too much, like. He's just coming at you, which I love that attitude, right? And they're, and they're letting him have that. So until somebody proves that they can, you know, really get on him and time him up. Right? I mean, he is coming at him. He's throwing. He's, they're not getting good swings on him. They're not putting off. They're not, like, barreling balls up. He's not getting lucky. Like, they, he's blowing the ball by him. Like, there's no – if his name broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean? Like, there's nobody sniffing him. You go and, out there and you just go and you throw cheese and they're not going to hit it. You got to understand, too, in, in 2022, like – so he comes in the game yesterday. He's got already almost eight innings pitched on the year, mm-hmm. and they're probably a decent amount of numbers. Like, hey, this guy, you know, this is his, yeah. his velo. He's going to throw this many fastballs. So it's not like they didn't know. Right. That's like, what I'm they had that a good idea that he was going to he was going to be heavy fastball. And well, there you go. So he's got and he's throwing top of the zone too, which is hard. So to hit. like if he pro- it looks like, and I don't like I don't have the numbers. I don't have the, the analytical numbers behind it, but it looks like. He has like a spin rate guy. He's like, oh, guy. what's his name? Razorman. Razorman. Ooh. Ooh, Lloyd wants to, Lloyd wants us to have the big chief. Every time he comes uh, at a post game after he pitches the next show, he wants to have cheese puffs. He wants us all to eat as many cheese puffs as he had strikeouts. Are you going to have the big tub? The, just exactly, the big tub. yeah. The, ra- the, <laughs> the Razelman tub. The Razelman tub. The Razelman tub. Cheese balls? <laughs> See how many cheese balls we can eat throughout the course of the year. So what, what number balls. are we at now? We're is that 20? 20? Is that 20? 20? So 20 cheese balls. 20 cheese balls. Is that, that you have to yeah, yeah, this single? is on Noah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Noah. Graphics guy. Face down. Face down. Face down. This dude, our graphics guy, he's, he's face chest down this way. Like stomach on the ground. How? Eating. Why? That's what he does. Why? That's how he eats. Do you not like eats. tables? <laughs> he, he eats in his bed. And he puts a pillow down. Yeah, yeah. Feet and up? Then he, and then he scoops. Feet up. He's like, Feet up behind him? He's in like prone position. 
Scorpion. <laughs> but I think I think I think LSU is in a good spot. <laughs> Back arch. Huh? Back at your ass. <laughs> yeah, nah. yeah. Put the pillow in between Jared your in, Mitchell. underneath your hips. Underneath your hips to keep the back arch going up for sure. Um, but I think last I think last night's a good I think last night's a good starting off point for L, not starting off point. I think that's a good way to enter into SEC play. They play A and M this weekend. It's going to be a big matchup. We have the show live from Fred's on Friday, which we are going to promo the crap out of because we didn't have many people last time. It was it was Mardi Gras last time we had a show. This weekend we have March Madness. You have LSU basketball on Friday. They play at 6. The baseball game is at 6.30. And it's March Madness. So there's going to have TVs playing. I'm going to talk to the Freds guys. Make sure we have some promo drinks where, hey, the first 50 people in, get a free shot or a free beer or free drinks. We have a tab for the Mike Dub Show. It's going to be great. The weather's going to be awesome. And it's a big weekend. Sun's out longer. You know, mm. it's going to be... Good time. It's going to be you nice. Gotta you got the, yourself, you got the, uh, yes. What's that? It's a good way to kind of... Get the ball rolling for St. Patrick's Day. Also, yeah, loo- you want to lube yourself up, up yeah. a little bit before the game, get a little sauced up, and then it's kind of the pregame to the St. Patty's Day parade right. the next day. Which get your legs underneath you. Yeah. Friday, you gotta, you have to train a little bit before. <laughs> right. You don't want to go in there, you know, empty stomach. That's how you pull a muscle. Yep, can't do that. Can't do that. But I want to ask you because of what happened last night, where the game got a little tight. I don't know what they were doing at Tulane, sending that guy and. Gio was able. I mean, so Gio was the, playing second base. Here's the deal, though, with that. And I understand Gio. I mean, Gio made a great play, right? The guy who's playing short end outfield hosed the guy. It wasn't even close. But I will say this: as an outfielder, and this is what we say. And this is why and I don't, uh, when fans get mad at third base coaches for sending guys and getting thrown out at home, like it is a hard play for an outfielder to come up, make a throw. There's a lot of moving parts. Just go throwing ahead, a guy out of Just go home. ahead and name him. Like, how many things have okay. to happen right now? So, as an outfielder, name. as an outfielder, you have to catch the ball first. Then you have to come up and you have to throw the ball home, right? Mm-hmm. Most of the time, 95% of the time, you're not throwing it on a line. It's bouncing. So, then the ball has to bounce to the catcher. The catcher has to catch the ball with his funny glove, right? He has to catch the ball, and then he has to tag the guy. First how off, many but, times but, have... But, let, let me just go in between that, too. But, like, if we got daytime or nighttime, like, nighttime... Not yet, maybe here, but you'll Shadows. get... Shadows. Well, the, the, the grass will get a little wet, which you yep. had a little more skip. Yep. Mm-hmm. Then you will just like a bounce and like check up a little right. bit. So like all these things play. There's like a what if, like if, it hits, if it hits a dirt clock and kicks off, or instead of bouncing up, skips, or instead of skipping, checks. Like there's a lot of moving parts to throwing a guy out. Dennis Rodman. It's, it's not... Here, uh, <laughs> it's not automatic that just because he's right there, he's going to... Like, you, you've seen... How many times have you seen a catcher come up and catch, try to make sweep tag and the ball comes out of their glove, right? Yeah. Or maybe he makes a bad throw and he short hops the catcher and he can't do it. Like, there's a lot of moving parts. So I understand at that point in the game, like, hey, this may be our only our best opportunity to tie the game. I understand sending him. I respect a lot more of the play that was made. The play is... You have to... No matter how... Easy the play seems like it is. You have to make the play. Inside the the game, bro, inside the game, like as a player, unless a guy has an absolute hand cannon, like where everyone knows, like, hey, if he catches this and fields it cleanly, you're probably out. Unless the guy has that, that's a you always take that chance. Oh no, I'm a big proponent. No, of I'm not. Side. I'm just yeah. saying, like, but like, because a lot of people see it and you're like, oh my god. Oh, why did you send them? Why you do this? No, like, no. Like, you always take that chance. Aggressive. Yeah, I agree 100 percent because like all the things that you just said, everything has to go right to be able to get him. But I'm telling you, Geo was at second. He was in the dirt. Like, yeah, I've, seen, I've yeah. seen I've seen guys tag up from uh, 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 infielder making a play behind right behind and that's the because you got you don't have your momentum going forward like the Gio was on a fucking run and just crow hopped it Still was got, a laser he was out about 40 feet no doubt but what happens if he short hops I, I'm i not saying what happens if that throws two steps to the right he still gets him no. it was he, no watch the replay I was there. I was you, on the line. you were there, but you're on the other way. You're behind. You're in the outfield, right? I was right next to him. That's how I know where it was. I was well, down the right field line. The catcher got it so early; he was able to block the whole plate. Yeah. Look, look, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it was like the right, but I understand why he did it. Yeah. And I understand there's a lot like that may be the only opportunity to tie the to tie the game. Yeah. Right. Like I, I'm not. I don't know if it was the right move, but it wasn't as like oh why like the most no brainer decision ever, right? I guess there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Nothing went wrong. It was a perfect play. Got him out. Big moment in the game. 
basically won the game. Right. That play basically won the game for LSU. Then you have Pearson comes off the bench, freshman. And here's another thing that I appreciate. Pinch hitting is hard. Like, extremely, extremely hard. That's why Matt Stairs. You know, everybody remember Matt Stairs? Yes. The guy from the Phillies? Big dude walked off the bench and would hit absolute bombs. That's why guys like him would get paid back in the day so much money because it is a skill to be able to pinch hit. It's a hard thing to do to be cold, not do anything all game. And in college, I don't know if they're allowed to even go out in the cage because the cage is up to, like so far down there. In professional baseball, if you're at home and you're the DH, you or you're the uh, you're on the bench and you have to pinch hit. You can go underneath the tunnel and hit in the cage to get loose. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's allowed to do that in college or not, but still, you're walking into a game in the big moment because when you're pinch hitting, it's not a pinch hit moment that doesn't mean anything. Every at bat means something when you're when you're a pinch hitter. Like you are there because the matchup is in the favor of the home team, and you need to drive this guy in. They're not just putting you in there just to hit; they're putting you in there to hit for a reason. So that also increases the pressure, and you're facing the back end of the bullpen guys. So these, all these things are stacked against you. This freshman comes up, and I like his swing. And you can tell Jay Johnson likes him a lot because he is the first lefty off the bench to pinch hit, always. So he comes in there, boom, double, insurance run, 7-5. We win the game. We go home. Font Nasty comes yeah. in and closes the game out. I don't know if I like the Font Nasty on the glove, but, you know. We're gonna, on the glove? On yeah. the glove. I'm not saying, look, hey, it's, teach it's, your own. It's teach your own. All I'm saying is if you got font nasty on the glove, you me. better be nasty. You got to be <laughs> punching tickets, boys. Because what did you whisper over there? Nothing. Back of the class? Nothing, because you, uh, you, if you're not punching tickets and you're starting to play Ole Miss, who did get beat by Southeastern last night? This the one team in the country wow, got beat by man. Southeastern. One and two lost last night. Yeah, but midweek games, man. Everybody gets mad about LSU midweek games, man. One and two lost. Midweek. Texas lost? Texas lost last year. Last week, uh, remember Horns Down, Texas State pitcher. They, no, they, they lost, lost that pitcher, too. Though. Oh, did they? Yeah, they lost, lost last yeah. night, too. Good. Yeah. This is what they get. Lanceville spite. Because if they kicked the, the bad juju, they kicked the yeah. catcher off the team. He was the the, he was the engine that made that team run. I think that'd be opposite. I think that'd be <laughs> all good. they gotta do is sit in the studio. You did the right. <laughs> you did the right. I think you did the right thing in that situation, right? Like this guy broke the rules. We're gonna do this because good karma. We don't have bad no. karma. Not. Maybe it was bad karma. Bad. That, it, it, they broke the unwritten rules of baseball. Drinking, having a it's simple unwritten. flask in the bullpen is unwritten rule of baseball. The Red Sox are drafting first overall. Red Sox. Yeah. Chicken and beer. Bobby yeah, in the clubhouse, not in the uniform on the camera. Oh, they were sneaking down in between innings. Everybody knows. How not on it. the camera. <laughs> you didn't see it. It was hidden. I didn't even know what There's happened. There's a lot of people that drink in the clubhouse. <laughs> Absolutely. You just don't see it. You just don't see it. There's a lot of people that maybe take a shot during the game Marshall and lose themselves up. You don't see it. Yeah. I've done that. it. We did that in high school. Got in trouble. Yeah, you're 16. Well, you're we underage and you're drinking. He said we did that in high school. Yeah. <laughs> this is, you are. You are. <laughs> Coach didn't know. You know what you are? You are something else. We have (laughs) two for four. (laughs) What, Dad? Dude, I wish I had. I wish I played with you in high school just to see. (laughs) I wish I. I wish I could. I could experience the Lloyd Courtney experience on the baseball field. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if I could experience that because I think that would be. You may. You probably would have driven me crazy in high school. I mean, we might might not have been friends actually. I don't know. In high school. No. High school Lloyd was, I mean, you got a taste of him at the games. LSU. Yeah, yeah, I did. I hated Lloyd at one point. I don't know if y'all know. I, when I first met Lloyd, he sat in front of my one of my best friends growing up. That, that's where his season took. I hated him. Wait, give me my a old, story. Well, like, why? Well, why was the hate so What do you want from Well, me? he was at the game. It was him and his brother. And it was always, your dad was always with y'all. Yes. And Lloyd and his brother were so obnoxiously loud. <laughs> and, like, were saying Good. the most outrageous things. And I'm watching the game. I'm like, shut up. You're making zero sense. Your stupid fan takes. It just doesn't make any sense. You don't understand what you're looking at. And then, obviously, then I got to meet Lloyd. I'm like, okay, I like you. I understand. We got past that. We got past that rough patch. We got past that rough patch in our life. Glad it happened early. Yeah, yeah, it happened before I knew you. you Exactly. It was bad first impression, but it's crazy. Like Lloyd is first impression didn't ruin it. Yeah, Lloyd is a. He's a he's He's a grower. Yeah, he's uh, the special exception of hey, first impressions don't mean. Something in the locker room. I mean. In impressions. <laughs> it's a stereotype. Personality impressions. <laughs> um, but 
to, to, to put a bow on the LSU baseball, I'm looking forward to this weekend. My friend is coming back in town because he's coaching for uh, Texas a and I'm looking forward to seeing him lose, but I'm looking forward to seeing him. I think LSU is going to go ahead and take care of business this weekend. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to we're going to preview the game at LSU. I mean, uh, at Fred's on Friday. Um, I think it's going to be. I think it's a good, perfect SEC series to jumpstart LSU into the year. Yeah, Nolan, if you're listening, we'd love to get Kaysen on. Ooh, we need Kaysen on, on here. We'd love you to need get to him see on Friday. the difference between the coach pitch leagues and in Baton Rouge and the coach pitch leagues in Texas. <laughs> we'd love College to get him on. Just letting you know. That's what I, that's what I need to see. Uh, on to uh, oh, before we go, before oh, we go, just oh. because of who we talked about, we hit on Font Nasty, and then we hit on Razzleman. Gervais? Do you think that there's a chance that they put Razzleman in as the closer because of what he does and how? I think so, but I think what I think the, I was going to leave that as the elephant in the room. I wasn't going. I think that there is a chance. Yeah. Bowl, bowl. I think bowl. there is a chance, but I think the fact that you see him throwing two and a third, three innings at a time, I think he's maybe more valuable right now in that role that he's playing. <laughs> As the bridge roll, as the first guy out the pen, little, like little joker you see roll that, a little bit. Yeah. You see that now in, ba- in Major League Baseball is you see like some of the best relievers on the team. You have a closer, but then maybe their best reliever is being put in the situation when they need them most, right? Sometimes the ninth inning isn't the mm-hmm. most monumental part of the game. Sometimes yeah. it's the seventh, sometimes it's the sixth, sometimes it's the eighth. Like, hey, kind of feel that momentum. We need to nix this. We're going to put our ace in there, our guy. And he's going to go and shut the now, door. Now, if we ran into a spot where, let's just say, I don't know, all three weekend starters were finding ways to go like five and six almost every time they're yeah. out, then he might end up. Maybe. We, maybe we can bridge to him. Maybe. And, maybe, and maybe, I don't know if, I don't know, know I don't know, or they, maybe they're building him up to be a starter, but I don't know he if he can be, be a starter. A, I don't see he can be a he starter. Be a starter? Same thing. Okay. Maybe they're building him up to be a starter again. I don't One know. pitch. Probably, I mean, he's playing in San Francisco. And look, and look, I don't know if there's... I don't know. Probably he's coming off of speed. a Tommy John. Tommy John. I don't know <laughs> if they're going to want him to throw all those innings. He's not here. checking for Tommy John. Tommy John's not here. He's just coming off... I don't know if they want him to throw all those innings this year, but they're, you can obviously see that they're building him up to do to something, do something more awesome. than just a one-inning guy. What about Gervais? He's been awesome. He's been great. He's been he's been great. Through, I mean, six foot ten throws 95, and he slings that thing. Like, love that. I love his story. Division three guy, got just kept getting better, kept getting better, kept getting better. And then boom, he gets a D one offer, comes to LSU, and he's like another bridge guy. He's a guy out the pen, yeah. So I think what people thought was a disadvantage to us going into the season has proven to be a strength right now so far. Is the depth of arms, the amount of arms. Blake Money, thankfully, Blake Money does not have a serious injury. They says day day said Jay Johnson said he had. Uh, an intense treatment session yesterday and said that it looked good. He responded well to it. Still day-to-day. That makes me think that he is going to be available, if not Friday, this weekend. Deshaun Watson, is that who you're talking about? <laughs> you're trying to segue us. No, it's in the treatment. <laughs> huh? In I got treatment. it. I got yeah. it. <laughs> uh, I got what you're saying. See, I was going to I was gonna just skip right over that, so I don't want to bring that back up, okay? But I, wasn't doing- I do want to clarify... My statement was about Deshaun Watson the other day because I was getting text messages like, I do not condone anything that he was alleged to do. Like, I don't condone any of that. But what I do respect or what I do like about the Deshaun Watson situation is Deshaun Watson is an extremely good talent. He was not charged criminally with these situations. So all things equal, nothing if he's found innocent, I think he is a great fit in New Orleans. I think that we should get... There's a reason why all these other teams are on him. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why Gail Benson has signed off on signing him and trading for him. Is because I she I don't think she would sign off on this situation if she didn't know the behind the scenes stuff on Deshaun Watson. That's my take on it. That's what I think. I think that he's an he's an unbelievable talent. I think he'd be put in a situation in New Orleans where. It's a win now. He's going to be happy. He had a full year off of football, which changes the mentality of a player. makes you hungrier, hopefully. For everybody that has that type of uh, talent and that type of leadership and that type of pedigree that everybody talks about, which is Deshaun Watson, being out of, out of football on the sidelines, watching it from, for a year, seems to me that would make him a little bit hungrier to get back on the field and prove to everyone that he is as good as he has been and that year does not affect him. I don't think that 
Gail Benson and the Saints would be into him if there was if there was question marks behind the scenes. So that's my clarification. Nobody get mad at me. I'm just. I was going to ask you what else she's going to do at catcher. I don't know. That's that's now that became the uh, the big question mark. I mean, you know, do you want to sacrifice offense for defense? Do you want to have an offensive minded catcher who's okay defensively or average defensively? I don't know. Neither one of these guys has stepped up and taken the role yet, and. You know, I think that's going to continue to be a catcher by committee type of thing. I think it's going to continue to be, you know, the hot. They're going to ride the hot hand until somebody proves that they are the guy that can take that role and run with it. <clears throat> I don't know who that guy is going to be. I don't have a favorite in the race. I don't have any inside information on who is better or who is better for the team. I think at that given time, you know, who's playing better. Who the pitchers like to throw to, I think that's probably going to weigh the most. If the pitchers are comfortable throwing to one guy more than the other, then maybe that'll be the decision. And then you're just going to take what you get offensively from those guys. That's my take on that. I don't. I don't know. I don't think there's a magic. There's a magic pill you can get and say, "Oh, this guy's going to be the guy." You know, I think it's going to. It's going to take some time to. I mean, look, they're they haven't gotten to the SEC play yet. When I was uh, when I was a freshman, I didn't start playing until the third week of the SEC. So, like, the lineups are still going to be changing through the course of SEC play. Like, it's not – it's okay that the lineup isn't dead it's set, set in stone, yeah. right now. Like, it's that's a constant uh, evolution, and I think that, you know, guys are going to end up stepping up and making some moves and, and doing some things. I think the lineup is in a good position going into SEC. I think guys haven't really hit their stride yet. I think they've – They've done a really good job of managing. Trey Morgan had some big hits last night. Mm-hmm. RBI, three RBIs. Like he's he's doing what he needs to do. I think he's hitting like three fifty, almost four. That first five is unreal. Yeah, right. And so I think those. I think the guys. I think they're they're in a good spot. And I think that you know, as the competition ramps up, the focus of them ramps up, their play ramps up, and they're gonna they're gonna be right where they need to be when it's all said and done. If I feel like they're about right where we expected them to exactly. be as they enter this spot. Exactly. I know people are mad because of the stuff in Houston, of that series in Houston, but that's over. Series. It happens. It happens. I'm just you know talking I mean? about strictly stats-wise yeah. on the year, no doubt. how they play. No yeah. doubt. They're about right where And guys haven't even gotten hot yet. You know what I mean? Because like, if it wasn't that, Barry, were, I mean, Barry's been swinging a hot bat, but if, like, for the most part. If they were 4 or 5-0 and oh on these, on these like, bigger games and, yeah. and dropped two or three midweek games, we'd, they'd, we'd still some, people would still find some way to be mad. I think record-wise, they're about right where you thought they were. Maybe oh. even a, a, ter- a tad better. I mean, they have three losses. <laughs> maybe, maybe even a tad better. Pitching's better you know what than I mean? you thought it would be? 100%. That's, 100%. that's the surprise. That's been the huge surprise. And if you want anything, if, if you want to find a good team, it starts on the mound. Like, you yeah. got to be able to pitch. Yeah, but you if, you talk, if you talk to the people before, if you talk to everyone before the season started, they were happy and they were looking forward to the their pitching depth. Yeah. Right? They knew they were deep. On the mound, they had a bunch of arms that they could count on. They just didn't know which ones were going to step up and where their roles were. And I think they have started to do that. And I think they're going to continue to start yeah. to do that. And I think that if you ask Jay Johnson, I think he's happy with how the pitching staff is going. And I, look, the new pitching coach has been awesome for us. You, know, you can see the the results of bringing him in and what he's done to the staff and the confidence he's given the staff. So I'm looking forward to. Seeing the progression of them, I'm looking forward to seeing the progression of the offense, and you know, hopefully the defense can continue to play the way they've been playing because they the last one error, you know, I want and look this happens. We talked about it now. I think uh, it was uh, it was Gavin in the outfield that made the error. I think I saw it was Gavin Dugan made the error, but like it was in the left, yeah, and oh, uh, Cruz tried to call him off, and you could tell it was yeah, it was miscommunication, yeah, a little. It was a it was a fluky thing. Cruz was not happy. Don't you have to respect the center fielder in that? Like you do. It's a, it's look. That's a that's uh that happens. I mean that happens. It happens. There. It happens in the big leagues. It happens in college. It happens to everybody. It's a fluky situation. They'll correct it. They'll get it over. And then with. they send a runner at third on Morgan's at bat that would have scored another run, but they had a guy that's at home on third with Cruz on deck gets canned at the plate. Goes mm-hmm. to review. Yeah, it's tough because right. Because you would imagine you would hold them if Cruz is hot. Yeah, you yeah. don't want you Four don't want you don't want you don't want to run out the inning with your best hitter on on deck. Right. 
I agree with that. That's Cardinals. Tough. I mean, that's. I agree with that. That may have not been the best move, but hey, aggressive. Aggressive, and you live with the aggressiveness. I'd rather them be aggressive than passive. You know, I just I wonder if it's a sign of where they think they are with Cruz right now. No. Like it doesn't even matter. Has nothing to do with Cruz. I mean, that guy is your guy. I mean, he had his sacrifice fly early in the game was a great swing. He just hit into the wind, just missed it. Could have been a homer. We came off the bat, thought it was going to be a homer, and it wasn't. But has nothing to do with the way they think about Cruz hitting because he's your guy. He's your best hitter. You let that guy. You want that guy to have an RBI opportunity every single up, every single time. You'd rather him have a guy hit, hit with a guy on third base with two outs than lead off the inning with no outs. That's. I mean, I don't think I had any indication. I think that was just a decision by third base coach or whoever made the decision. If, if it was a player on his own or third base coach, whoever did it, because we don't know. You know, because as a, at that point, when you're tagging up or when you're running, sometimes it is the player's decision like blowing through this thing yeah like if you if you run through it like someone can give you a stop sign now I, I didn't see if he's waving him home or not or if he was telling him to go home or not but you don't really like it's it's a lot of the time it's the player's decision mm-hmm. and you know it was aggressive and he made the move and that's a learning that's a learning situation but that's 45 minutes of LSU baseball talk, boys. Can't get it anywhere everybody, else. Everybody that gets, UT, can't baby. get that anywhere else. Absolutely not. Can't you can't get the Walmart. LSU baseball. We're trying to get the baseball boys on here. I know they want to come on here. It's a tough time to come into the studio. Lloyd Calm. is mad. Calm. Look, all my friends on the baseball team that we have talked to that follow the show, I love y'all. I follow y'all. I can't wait to see y'all in Omaha. Don't react to Lloyd's face. Do not right listen now. to Lloyd. Lloyd is a <laughs> dork. I just want to talk. <laughs> I just want to talk. I'm He's a mad. dork, and he I'm just mad. wants to hang out with y'all because he – He's just, he's, a, he's a clout chaser a little bit. Demon clout wow. chaser. Am I, I'm not the <laughs> you're opposite. Not a, you're not a clout chaser. I'm just joking. But Cut demon. I'd like to have the boys on <laughs> the Unless show. Unless you're going to be on a parade float, then I will. Yeah. Get me on there. Boys. I'd like to show I'd like to have time. the boys on the show. Uh, we've been in contact with a lot of the guys on the team. They want to come on the show. The scheduling has been very difficult to get them on the show. We got our new soundboard in, which means that video calls hopefully are on the very – Horizon, Hor- the, the the near horizon, like we're right close to the edge of this thing. If not, we're just gonna have to start doing the old fashioned, the old fashioned phone calls. But I know you guys want to talk. I want I want these guys to come in here so that they can show their personality. They can kind of give us an inside look, and they want to do the same thing. So we're gonna get these guys on the, in, in studio um, soon. Chad Jones will be in studio very soon, soon, very soon, in fifteen minutes. Um, he has not. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 That wasn't him. Silence is better than a text message. <laughs> no, I've not gotten a text message, which means he's still coming. He's just not here yet. Um, but let's move on to NFL for a little bit. Free agency has been crazy. There's a lot of new places, not a lot of new people in new places. Um, Russell Gage, our guy from LSU. We we're talking about that today, this morning. Me and Jamie were talking about it this morning. He signed a three-year, $30 million deal, $20 million guaranteed with the Bucks. Is that is that final? Yeah. yeah. So they actually gave him another year. That's yeah, good. Good 20 guaranteed. So yeah. he gets to play with Tom. I think he's a perfect slot receiver for Tom. What's crazy to me is everybody has always talked about how freakishly athletic Russell Gage is, even when he was at LSU. Mm-hmm. He didn't really come into his own until his last year at LSU. He kind of saw some of those flashes. Then he goes to the NFL – he uh, has to work his way, he's a special teams guy, get some, get some play a little bit towards the end of the year. All of a sudden, like, damn, this last couple of years, he's been solid. Now he's a free agent. He gets to go play with the Bucks and he gets to play with Tom Brady. And he's probably going to be their third receiver. Like, good for Russell Gage. That guy is just staying with it. And now he has an opportunity to go win a Super Bowl ring with the greatest quarterback that's ever played this game. So, shout out to him. That's great. Tyrod Taylor goes, goes to the he's New York Giants. He's getting baby. Two years, 17 mil. He gets, honestly, his deal is the exact same as Trubisky's, basically. Trubisky's a starter. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. Awesome agent. Great agent. I, I think Tyrod's good. I don't think he's, like, unbelievable good, unbelievably good. I think he's a great, um, he's a great, like, bridge ga- guy. Yeah, bridge guy. Like, he's a great, like, he can start, he's going to win you some games, he's going to do some things, but he's not going to take you to the promised land. But if you don't really have a set guy... He can go and run your offense and give you respectable numbers and, and get you in a position to win games. Can we show some love to NFL's most, um, 
I don't know what would the what would the word be the most uh I know where you're going. You know where I'm going with I this? don't know where you're going. Oh, I was just gonna say, can we give some respect to the NFL's most um fortunate man? I guess you can. Oh, just Chase Baker. Baker? Uh, <laughs> Baker? Baker. Chase, Chase no 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 no. <laughs> We get into that. <laughs> Chase Daniel. You thought that you thought the Baker apology, I mean the Baker letter was good, right? We'll get to that. Uh, but Chase Daniel <laughs> said to Jared on the letter. The, the, the Baker letter made me want to TTYL. It made me want to throw up in my shoe. L Y L A S L. The Baker letter made me want to throw up in my shoe. That's neither. But we'll talk about Chase. I want to. I like Chase. Chase Daniel. Two one year, two point two five million dollars to be the backup quarterback to. Justin Herbert in San Diego. I mean, uh, San Diego, not San Diego. The Chargers, LA Chargers now. He has made $40 million. 41.5. 41.5 million dollars in his career <laughs> as the backup quarterback. He has five starts, 240 plus <laughs> passing attempts in the league, and he has made $41 million. Eight touchdowns. I would love to know that how many is... I would love to know how many of those passing attempts came before the fourth quarter, too. Oh. Meaning, like, not on like, hey, this is. Game's over, who you are. Yeah. Like, how many I, of those came before that? I don't know, but I know that his agent is awesome. I don't know who his agent is. And two, Chase Daniel must be the best clubhouse guy, must be the best guy to have in a quarterback room, and must be, be the best quarterback coach How many years is he in the world? Really? How many, how many 12. years? 12 years, 200 and what? Huh? 60-something passes, you said? I don't even know. 240. 240-something. 12 years. Can you imagine being in the league for 12 years, playing quarterback? Being a quarterback. I'm not going to say playing quarterback. Being a quarterback and and making $41 million basically and just being, on the side of your being, And, and, being, it, and here, being, being in the opportunity where you are on a team that is has a established quarterback who never gets hurt. So you've never had to be exposed to be able to play. Life. That's what happens with some of these backup quarterbacks. Wait, so, it's like wait, he's been behind Drew. Has he been in Kansas City too? Yep. He's been behind Kansas. He's been in Kansas City. He's about to go to Philly. He's about. To, he's been to Philly. He's about to go. I mean, good Detroit. lord, Detroit. I mean, he is. He, been, he's not like backing up like the guys would be like. Ah, oh, this guy might be out of it by week five. Like he's it's backing up dudes. Yeah. <laughs> they're not. They're not having <laughs> real bad. Real like, uh, Alex Moran. Yeah. Yeah. Great gig if you could get it. No God. doubt. It's the best. Gig, it's the best job in football. Most fortunate. Best job in sports, maybe. Definitely. Because you get a ton of money. A bullpen catcher. No. Everyone loves a backup quarterback. Everybody loves the backup quarterback because they always. But he's so backup, they don't even expect him to play. No, they're like, "Well, not Chase. He yeah. must be doing." Well, well, like I said, look at where he keeps going. Oh, he's yeah. behind Drew. He's behind Patrick Mahomes. Like they're like, "Come on, we're gonna play this guy." Boys, just what? got a text. Trump, what? The dreadlocks of doom. He's here. Pulling up. Let's say, go. You, you not see the smile on his face? He's here. Pulling up in two minutes. <laughs> he didn't let us down. I knew he wasn't gonna let us down. Not the dreadlocks yeah. of doom. I knew it. Um, all right, let's let's run through the rest of this. Saints restructuring season still. They are under the cap, I think now. I think they are officially have restructured everybody they needed to get restructured to get under the cap. And if not, they are a couple million over the cap. Wait, wait. Okay, okay. Uh, they signed Marcus May, three year, twenty eight and a half million, fifteen million guaranteed. Jared still thinks they are going to sign Tyron. Which I won't, I won't say. I'm no, crazy. he thinks that there's still a possibility. Here's my thing. Still a possibility. Thing. With the there's been what three or four like top of the line safeties just come off the market already. My only the only reason I'm saying that is because I got to imagine Ty- Tyron's probably at the top two or three of that, right? Yeah, he hasn't gone. He hasn't really heard anything, which lets me know he's holding out to see what kind of teams are going to shake out. So I'm only hold I'm only holding on to hope in the sense of that. Hey, if Deshaun ends up coming here and things he's clear up for that, that he's still got a chance of coming here. However, they make it work. That's uh, I hope saying. I hope you're right. I think Jarvis is still on the board. Deshaun Watson is meeting yeah. the, the Falcons. Snuck in there. Yeah. This, now he's talking to the three teams. He's I, talking. But to. I feel like the Falcons and are the doing. The Browns that. are talking to him. I, this me personally. I feel like the Falcons are doing that just to try to drive up the price on him. Yeah, no doubt. Probably. Hopefully, to either screw up the 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 future of the either team that yeah. in this division that might get him, or just drive it up so high that they they just they let him go. So the four teams. The four, That's what I think they're doing. The four teams that are in on him are Falcons, Panthers, Saints. All in the same in the NFC South and the Browns. And I don't think the Browns have a real chance either. I don't think so either, but Ooh, apparently yeah. Baker Mayfield does. Baker's all up in his feelings right now. A, We're not uh, talking about Baker right think. now. The only reason I don't think they have a real chance to get him because I think that they're like, look, 
no shot in the hell we're about to watch him go to AFC championships and it's not in Texans red and blue. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think they yeah. want anything to do with, with, right. with trading him to another I agree. AFC squad. I agree. I, I would love to see him in New Orleans barring any unforeseen legal issues. Right. If there's, if he's I'm, proven, we're, we're speaking solely on the fact that he's, he's innocent, innocent until pr- proven guilty, yes. right? So I'm not talking about, like, literally, we're, we're hopeful in the, in the sense that if he's innocent, this is what we would love to see. Yes. That's it. You should just go to Las Vegas. Good for them. It's legal. Jesus. What? I'm saying prefers to just prevent anything yeah. from happening. <laughs> Go the Bunny Ranch. Yep. <laughs> HBO. Jesus. You, you're a big HBO guy. You're a big HBO documentary guy. That guy's guy. dead. I've never seen it. I don't know we need a segment oh, called Lloyd right. After Dark. I haven't. Yeah. I've never seen <laughs> it. I've never seen quick. The Bunny Ranch. No. I you know what Taxi Cab Confessions is? I mean, I know what that is. I've never seen The Bunny <laughs> Ranch, though. Taxi Cab, like... Have you seen Texas anyway, Confessions? Anyway, did, we, <laughs> did we put did we put the Jags, the Jacksonville Jaguars? Jagging off. The, uh, I wasn't the, able to get it. get it. Okay, anyway. The Jags are making moves, moves. They signed seven guys in free agency that are that are good. They went Christian Kirk. They signed Evan Ingram. They signed a bunch of guys. Doug Peterson is going into Jacksonville right now. He's trying to, he's, he's making splash moves. If I remember correctly, they spent over like a hundred million dollars for Kirk, Ingram, and Zay Jones. They have, they do and they have uh the the number two cornerback from um the charge I mean the, from the Rams last year. Well, I'm yeah, I know. I'm just saying like in the in the sense of those three, I'm like, look, yeah. it's a roll of the dice a little bit. If they're it works like they're out, talented, they stay healthy. If it works great. out, great. But if it doesn't, whew, yep. it's gonna set you back a while. But that's kind of what you have to do. Yeah, yeah like, they do. The, they do for sure. Yeah, football and football wise, like hey, all this money is not guaranteed. You can yeah. get out of it. You can mm-hmm. move it. I think the Saints have shown you that. You just keep kicking the can down the road Gymnastics. and figure this stuff out. The team that people are going to have to really, really, really pay attention to next year is the Los Angeles Chargers. Because they yeah. signed, you saw how good they were offensively. They signed J.C. Jackson from the Patriots, and they traded for Khalil Mack. So now, and they still got Darren running around. And, and Joey Bosa. Yes. Mm-hmm. I might be taking their defense like first overall. Like I mean, yeah. they are. And Miles Jackson, <laughs> free agent now, because yeah. he got released from the Jaguars. That's so. True too. And Bobby Wagner's out there, huh? They and Bobby Wagner's out there. They have opportunity. Secondary, they have right. opportunity out there to to. to re- I can't wait to see where he goes. Uh, come to New Orleans, man. Hey, man. He's here, boys. Chad He's is here. entertainment. Chad is luck, Chad man. is worth the money, price of admission. But yeah, I think that th- these guys are. Um, I think the Chargers are making some big moves. Tampa, obviously, Tom's back in Tampa. Gronk, back maybe. Pounding the youth, you would assume. Gronk's back. Tom's back. Tom's back, Gronk's back. That's kind of how that works, I would assume. <laughs> oh, but maybe Gronk to Cincinnati. No, Gronk ain't going nowhere. They got rid of Uzoma. Oh, they did yeah, get rid of Uzoma. Jets. Hey. Congrats. What is that move about? Bro, Joe Barrow being a good like agent. Bro, are y'all crazy? Gronk ain't going nowhere. I know that, but Gronk why? retired so he could play with Tom again. I'm like, with Gronk you. ain't going nowhere. I'm with you, but he did, come out and say, he did come out and say he Buffalo. maybe would think about playing with for, for Yeah, Jeremy. when when the thought was that Brady wasn't coming back. Uh, you're the right. thought was Buffalo. Bro. You're right, you're right. You slander this man. All right, I'm just Chad, saying. Brady, Chad just Brady got here. Next year. Is he here? Yeah, he's here. He's here. Chad just got here. We're going to take a little bit of a break, get Chad situated, come back on the back end of this, and we will have a very, very, very fun conversation. Yeah. Get up in the chat. Ask some questions in the chat. Give us something you want to talk to Chad about. Ask Chad about. He's an open book, and we're going to get Chad to open up like he's never opened up before. People love y'all. What a tease. You like that? That was good. I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better. See y'all in a little bit. Mic'd up. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports, have a ton of guests in here, get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house, Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us, it's okay. Just get us out there, show, share us out there. We have having fun, we want to share our fun with you. Like I said, Mike Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 1. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See y'all. Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Miked Up. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports, have a ton of guests in here, get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house, Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us, it's okay. Just get us out there, share us out there. We having fun, we want to share our fun with you. 
Like I said, Mike Dub brought to you by Sterling Automotive every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 1. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See y'all. Hey, y'all. It's Mikey from Mike Dub. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports. Have a ton of guests in here. Get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house. Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us. It's okay. Just get us out there. Show, share us out there. We having fun. We want to share our fun with you. Like I said, Mike Dub brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 1. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See y'all. Hey, y'all. It's Mikey from Mike Dub. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports. Have a ton of guests in here. Get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house. Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us, it's okay. Just get us out there, show, share us out there. We having fun, we wanna share our fun with you. Like I said, Mike Dub brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to one. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See y'all. Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Mike Dub. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to one. Talk gambling, talk sports, have a ton of guests in here. Get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house. Jay Mitch is in here. Welcome back to Mic'd Up. We got a special guest in the building. Some may call him the Dreadlocks of Doom. I've never heard anybody call him that, but apparently that was his nickname in 2009. <laughs> he is the only guy that I know that has gotten ejected from a football game in high school because he hit somebody too hard. It wasn't know. an illegal hit. But they ejected him because the guy was just too dangerous for the football field. My friend, the only reason before I became... Before targeting. Before targeting. <laughs> invented my, targeting. My friend, the guy who I... The only reason I started at LSU is because he decided to go play football and gave me a month to go and, and figure out my stuff. My friend, Chad Jones. Yeah! Welcome to the studio, Chad Jones. Going on, it, it took us. It took us a couple times. We had uh, we had a little trial and error. We had some car issues. We had some some last minute work stuff. But we got you in studio. Yeah. Made the drive from New Orleans. Uh, what's going on, dude? Man, hey, just glad to be here, man. Finally got a couple off days. Come hang out with the guys. That's it. What are you doing now? Everybody's been asking me. Mm -hmm. I know what you're doing, but for everyone that doesn't know what you're doing, what do you, what have you been up to? Man, um, everybody knows they had that big Airbnb boom um, that was stretched out across the country. Uh, so I hopped into that real heavy. I uh, bought a couple properties in New Orleans, um, one in Houston. So running my own short-term rental business. As nice. Now. Nice. How's that going for you? It's going pretty good, man. Um, boom is, business is back booming. Okay. Booming. Business is booming. Yeah, that business is back booming. I'm COVID, with, back COVID gave you a little hit with COVID, but oh, you Oh, man, back? wearing me out. You know, I'm out of pocket <laughs> with mortgages 10, 13 months in a row, Oof. kicking my butt, man. Uh, hey. But you back. You got it back. You're on, back. Back rolling. You're back. Back rolling. Um, obviously, everybody knows the story. That you get signed, you get drafted, the car accident, and you go play baseball. And talk a little bit about what went into, how did you get through, not necessarily the football part, but how did baseball come back in your life? And like, what did baseball do for you mentally and for yourself to just kind of get back up on your feet? Man, uh, let me let me start by saying this. If if I had to do it all over again, man, I would have went the baseball route first. Hey. Okay. Okay. Um, well, like I said, it was just um, you know, uh, when I was trying to get back into football, you know, um, I actually re-signed back with the Giants. Um, got Super Bowl ring out of that, so we're really happy go. about that. Um, so two years of training, you know, two years of rehabbing, working hard. Because they you know, said you were never gonna that. walk. Exactly. You know, like I said, I remember first day. Um, I'm coming, kind of coming out of surgeries. Uh, doctors coming inside the office. Me, my mom, a couple of church friends as well. Parents. Uh, um, he was trying to figure out, hey, Doc, what's going on? You know, um, he said, well, hey, Chad, well, let's not think about football, the sports in general at all right now. Um, he said, let's just think about our health, you know. Let's thank God that, uh, you know, he's still he's still alive, still on this side of the ground. Um, but he said, saying that I wasn't going to walk unassistedly again. You know, um, and that's kind of what he left us, coming out, leaving out the room. And I'm looking at my family and um, looking at, um, you know, people from the church or whatnot um, and just saying, like, man, hey, I'm, I'm definitely going to be playing ball again. You know, like I said, because that never just, it couldn't just, I right. didn't, it couldn't even register to me, you know. Um, and like I said, and then right when I said it, I just got to have a whole bunch of followers that followed me along and pushed me all the way through, you know. So um, that was the first and all, that was the first and last time that I have ever heard that, you know, in my life. So, um, but yeah, man, you know, just getting over those rigorous 
days of grinding, you know, got me prepared to be able to. How long did it take? How long was that, like, the rehab part of it? Obviously, I know that it took a little while, but, like, before, when, I guess, what was the turning point for you when you're going through those tough Mm -hmm. rehab days? Because the beginning was probably the hardest. You go through it every day, and, like, you may not be able to walk, maybe not take two steps. Now you take three steps. Like, at what point did you get to that threshold and say, hey, I'm going to do this. This is going to happen. Like, I see the progress. Man, like I said, now the rough stage, um, like I said, so first and foremost, I was in the hospital on my back for about a month and a half in the bed. Um, came back home, was on bed rest for another six months, five to six months after that. Um, but man, like I said, that first, the first year was, was basically hell for me, man. You know, um, like I said, I, I lost a lot of hope there, you know, um, a lot of days going to training, um, no progress, you know, um, no feeling in certain places on my leg, you know, so a lot of, uh, just a lot of things just weren't turning up on the right side of things. But I say about a year and a half's worth, you know, um, once I was able to truly get out of that boot, get out of that boot and put a regular tennis shoe on and um, start learning, you know, by that time I learned how to treat, turn myself, how to walk, treat, teach myself how to walk again. But, um, but man, while I, about a year and a half after I got out of that boot, put a tennis shoe on, that's when things started changing. And then you start running, you started doing it. And you get, yeah. so you had some tryouts yeah. with other teams. And you had to. Run, I'm sure they said. I mean, you had to run the forty. You had to do all these things. What did you get your forty time back down to? Whenever Man, you were um, in those styles. So of course, my target was uh, to obviously want to come back to the way how I was going into the right. draft. Um, but got realistic with myself. You know, two years later, that that wasn't going to be a true real true realistic possibility. But um, you know, I running running forties, and I was sub five uh, sub five when I first started running and. You know, and I never trained for one at that time, so I was actually a little excited once that happened. Yeah. But um, I actually right, wound up running um, a low 4.8, you know. Um, low 4.8 at, at the time, I was, what, 240 pounds at that time. So I was thinking possible, um, possibly sliding in that linebacker or anything like that. But, um, man, it was just rough, you know, bouncing around from teams. I had a workout, workout with the Giants. You know, they re-signed me. I um, was on the team long enough to uh, get the Super Bowl ring. Um, right. It was wonderful. I was on the sideline for that. Um, got released by them, couldn't pass the physical. Um, did a, two more workouts, one with the Eagles. Everything was working all right. Everything signed up good, lined up good. Um, was going to sign me on practice squad. You know, hey, it was like, hey, as long as I get a shot, get on the team, I should be all right. Same thing again, physical, failed to physical. Yeah. Um, got close back home. Hey, Saints, you know, hey, what, what, a, what a chance would it be to work out and play for the Saints? Um, same type of deal. Physical, you know, wanted to sign me on the practice squad, but hey, couldn't pass the physical. So I saw that was a continuance um, of a thing with football, you know, so it was hurting my dreams with that. That's kind of when I decided to kind of, you know, call it quits, you know, um, transfer my talents over to, from football to baseball. So was it, was that instant? The minute you stopped playing and football, was it instant that you were going to play baseball? Or did you, when you said, okay, I'm done playing football, did somebody reach out to you? Like a scout or somebody say, hey, you know what, Chad? Let's see if you let's see let's let's see about this baseball stuff. Man, throughout this throughout this entire stretch of me when I was getting back healthy, uh, grinding to get back into football, um, people saw my video. I had a um, always a fire video, you know, that came out um, through Yahoo Sports, and that was blasted on out around the country. So a lot of teams actually kind of reached out to me, was um, seeing if I was healthy enough, you know, they were thinking about the wing, thinking about the left arm, you know, because hey, did a little something in college. You know that was some yeah, game people. time only. Yeah, you know it. Game, game time, time only. only. Wow. Game time wow. Only. Wow. Hey, Chad. Game time hey, Chad. only. Chad, coach said you need to throw a bullpen. He said, and Chad's already dressed. He said, nah. Tell coach game time only. Like, <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I, y- y'all bring it back so many memories. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah, game time only was definitely. Yeah, a thing. We're gonna get. We're gonna get. Into <laughs> okay, the we're gonna get there. We're gonna get to the. But story. yeah, but definitely. Well, I, want, I want people to know. I want, I want people to know about your journey and how you got to it and how definitely. everything happened. Heck yeah. Wait, man. wait, wait. Did you just say that you'd never trained for a forty before, and this is after the NFL draft? Well, no, no, no. I'm saying this is um this is after my car wreck. So I knew that, but you got drafted before. No, right? most definitely. Oh, I did. Oh, I did big time. <laughs> okay. uh, big time training. Yeah. Um, shout dead, out, shout out to Rocky, the Alliance. You know, yeah. Yeah, he took good care of me, man. Took good care of me. So you had, so you had teams reaching out. Yes. How much longer after you stopped playing football and decided, hey, football, I'm done with football. Mm -hmm. How much longer from that point till the time you got drafted? Like, what was that? What was that stretch of time? Man, (laughs) that's the weirdest part of the whole entire deal. From the time I made the decision to, uh, I'm saying, so two months after uh, that that Saints workout, I was like, hey. You know, let's 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 figure this out. Let's. Uh, I see this a continuous thing of football. 
not even going to keep kind of working, grind for that. Let's switch it on over to baseball. So two months after my after the Saints workout, I'm training. I'm at Big Easy Sports Complex in yeah. New Orleans, you yeah. know, grinding, getting after it. Uh, put Did that you work-, work with a pitching coach or do anything, or was it all just you getting yes, um, it has it has, some, it has some people over there that they work with. Um, yeah, I spent a little money for the, so I can get that tr- true attention that I needed because I'm telling you, the draft was coming up in four months after that. So right. I had a small amount of time to get some workouts done. So I said two months later, I had a workout at uh, Rummel High School, man. There Rummel High School. Uh, Rummel High School had about five, about five, shout six out to the Raiders. <laughs> shout out to the Raiders. You know, that's not <laughs> maybe the only time they'll get a shout out from me. But, you know, shout out to, shout out to hey, the Rummel Raiders. And I made me Raiders. think about Mike, too. I'm like, Mike, yeah. you're so salty. The Raiders. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the Rummel Raiders. They let me use their field, man. Did a workout. Um, still had it, man. I hit ninety two a couple times. Hey. You know, that was and it's what? been it's been how many years since then? This is literally five six years. You know, from from every five six years. Not baseball. taking a baseball. Oh, it, 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 it gets crazy. Yeah. 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 It's, it gets about, crazy. This, this is about five years from not touching a baseball, man. Still got it. Ninety um, didn't go below eighty eight. You know, eighty eight to ninety three. You know, so um, the black it's looking clay. real good. <laughs> it's looking real good. I uh, actually had some teams that's looking to do uh, sign me right then and there. Didn't want me to go through the draft process. You know, but uh, went through the draft. I found out that I was able to even do that. Yeah, I didn't even know how's that, that man. I didn't even know. I didn't know. That. I thought that, I thought you were gonna have to sign as a free agent. I didn't even so, know. You 100% thought the same thing. So that's exactly what I thought as well. But you know, coming out of college, you know, I never signed. You know, I never signed a professional baseball contract. You know, got drafted out of high school to the Astros. Didn't sign. Um, went to LSU, played ball there. Who drafted me? Uh, the Brewers, if I'm not mistaken, um, picked me up. Even after I went to the to the NFL, mm-hmm. um, Brewers still drafted me just to have my rights, just in case. Um, that fell off, and then yeah, fell out. Found out I was draft eligible, and got wind up getting picked up in the ninth round um, by the Reds, right? By the Cincinnati Reds, you know. Um, that was my. That would make my what? That was my one, two, three. We got Houston Astros, Milwaukee Brewers, um, New York Giants. Since, yeah, that's my be my fourth time getting drafted, man. You know, um, <laughs> as a professional athlete, you know. So, and so you, you so you get, so you got drafted by the Reds. Where'd you yeah. go from the, the minute you got drafted? Where was your first? They put you. They probably brought, brought you to what short season to start to yeah. get put your me, arms. They popped pop me right there on uh, spring training. What yep. good year? Good year, Arizona. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so got there. They wanted to make sure that I was all together more so. Um, so he took it real slow with me because um, I, I let him know that I was not in condition, you know, to, to truly get the pitching already. So um, they, yeah. kept, they housed me there for, um, i say, probably half the year. Um, actually made it out to Billings, Montana. I think, what, that's um, a ball. Where did you get your velo up to at that point? Was it still about sitting, like, low 90s? Yeah, like, yep. I, said, I, like I said, so I was, um, average, I was sitting right around that 90, 91, you know, but got it up to 94 at times. Yep. You know, it was real promising with that, but... Um, but yeah, man, you know, like I said, season season ended real fast. You know, I did a lot of training. Uh, went to A ball, did re- very well out there. Um, so I was looking forward to a big year coming up next year, man. You know, I was looking forward, but uh, had a, had a good go my first year. Uh, treated me treated me like a true professional. You know, that was surprising the difference you yeah. know, between football to baseball, man. It was amazing. What um, did they? Was there ever a conversation that about you playing baseball and football? I mean, not baseball. Hmm. Uh, uh, being a hitter and a and a pitcher, or just they just wanted you strictly on the mound. Man, I'm telling you, my uh, my the area scout because this man since got a standing Reds. ovation in Omaha when he hit batting practice because he was hitting balls out of the stadium. So, there's only literally <laughs> the batting practice he took and the batting practice Matt Clark took the year before. Yep. Two of the more impressive bad practices I watch. I'm like, bro, what is going on? Now, when you're in Omaha, the first day you get like, there's like 20,000 people there for the team's practices. Yes. And so like, it's like, you're kind of like nervous. Like this is exci- like almost. exciting nervous. Definitely. You know, like you're there. Chad goes up there. Chad probably hit 15 home runs in the round of batting practice. And balls were getting pummeled out of the stadium. And he got a standing ovation from the crowd. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was, what position it was, does he play? He's a, He's a pitcher now. That only makes me think, that only makes me think too about, about the conversation him and Leon had too. Either was that that day or the next day? Hmm. On the field? About what? About whose dad would Who's be. Ba- whose dad would be each other's dad? <laughs> And then you still got you still have the flames on the ankles. Still got the flames on the yep. ankles, man. Because him and Leon that. had a race, they had a, they had a race in Omaha, and, and Chad beat him, and Chad was flaming out the, the flames <laughs> yep. on his ankles. Yep. So, hey. 
Um, but yeah, so they said that they just wanted you on the mound. Is that kind of what they said? Or? Um, well, to be honest, like I said, um, my area scout, you know, that he he watched me ever since I was and heard about me since I was in middle school. He preached to them that hey, this guy can actually hit. He can play in the outfield. Right. Like most people in their most recent memory was, you know, at LSU. Yeah, I mean nowadays the way baseball is Not now, really. they would have loved you to do both. Hundred percent tried it. Yeah. You know, because wow. b- back then both nobody did both. Wow. Now they got a lot of guys trying to do both. They have guys in the big leagues doing both. Yeah, I don't even crazy. think that the Cincinnati League's minor league system knows that I can even do anything with a bat. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. You didn't come here as a pitcher. The only reason you pitched is because Mary didn't have a lefty in the pitch. Hey, Coach, I can pitch. There you go. What do you mean you can Try pitch? Me out, man. We'll get to that story after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The LSU story <laughs> is the hell yeah, fire. I saw Zoe. Or your met, girl. Yeah, yeah. I met Zoe. Yeah, I met her, met her on out there. You know, um, fell in love with New Orleans. She came on back. We named our daughter Nola. Hey. You know, our daughter's Nola. She just made six with Chad. That's Definitely. awesome. Absolutely. So there, we have people in the chat asking questions. They asked, they wanted to know, do you like baseball more than you than you like football? Or did you think you were better at baseball than you were at football? Because oh, that's, that's a great a, question. That's a hard thing to ask because that's you were question. one of the best free safeties. That's a great question. In college football. Gotcha. You know, and so, you know, but I don't think people got to see how good you really were on the baseball field because football kind of took precedent at the Correct. time. Correct, man. Well, well, coming up, you know, ever starting off with anything with sports, you know, baseball was my, always my thing. I loved baseball. I loved the challenge of it. Um, if anything, football was more so easy for me. Um, just, uh, just, just being straightforward. No, um, I love that. I was big at my position. Um, had the speed to do it, um, and had the God given ability in the in the bloodline. You know, had some had some good blood in me. So, um, so like I said, football always came easy to me. But man, I'm telling you. Running outside on Tiger Stadium, my first game, Virginia Tech, 2007. Um, it was a big game. I think we were ranked like number three. The Virginia was ranked uh, maybe number nine. That was the Keelan game. Williams game, right? It was insane. Yeah, that, was, that was the Cam Chancellor game. The Cam yeah. Chancellor game. The story yeah. we were just talking about. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Cam Chancellor with Tyrod Taylor as well. Mm-hmm. Um, just coming out there, you know, I remember running on the field. I just remember so much noise. And then getting on the field, he's got so much line into where it was just here flat line. You know, um, just having that experience, you know, playing in front of Tiger <laughs> Stadium, you know, on the football field, you know, that's what an experience. But I'm telling you, LSU baseball, me pitching, being on the mound, that is the most deepest and best memory that I have, you know, sports wise. With money on my mind in the background? Money First off, then look, then, 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 if we're on it, wow. Wait, 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 time out. So, look, yes. if we own it, how about you just go ahead and tell them, like, the whole situation of how you got to pitching, because what the way it went, well, you you were a hitter, you were a hitter, you were an outfielder here, like man, it was I never was, really thought to be. Man, like. I was doing good. That was fair catching fly balls in the outfield, everything. <laughs> yes, every, I, yeah, everything. Man, that was it was just great, man. I was batting what fifth in the lineup, you know. Um, his, his, his hitting pretty good, you know, getting on base, driving in runs. Um, but we had new defensive uh, coaching changes um, with football. Um, so you got Chavis, right? Yeah, John yeah. Chavis. Yeah, we had Chavis come on yep. in um, and had defensive coaching changes. So obviously, I was on football scholarship. Coach McNary, hey, I mean not Coach McNary, um, Miles had to pull me on back. Had to learn a new defense. Going to be a starting safety. Understood. Um, pulled me out on the field. Um, had to go learn that. Was gone for what two, three months? But see, like two months. Like, yeah. Thank you. Life. Thank you. By the way. Gone appreciate with a, that. Hey, yeah, hey. <laughs> had, had the, community man. You know? yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> man, you know, hey, well, 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 well um, opened up a door for a young guy. You know, come on in there in the outfield, and you know, started off a little rocky, but Is I'm it? telling you, found found his groove and 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 became somebody. That's you what know? I'm talking about. So Mikey Matuk definitely <laughs> took my spot the whole night. <laughs> I'm telling you, when I, when I got back to baseball, I'm like, hey, let's go. You know, we rolling, ranked, you know, like, let's get it done. You know, I mean, Coach Manara saying, like, Chad, hey, it's, uh, you know, we got a young kid out there, and um, it, he's, doing, he's doing just fine, Chad. He's doing just fine. And um, we're going to try to find a way to get you on in there. And I'm telling you, about four games passed, and I didn't see the field. <laughs> so, so Coach Miles, um which Miles heard word of this is like, hey, well, since you're not playing or you're not starting, Chad, you know, come on back to football. You know, I'm saying, hey, he's trying to pull me off the field again. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I'm back in Coach Maneri's office, like, hey, coach, what's going on? You know, hey, I've been a team player the whole nine, but like I said, gotta get on the field. You know, what's up with me and Mikey rotating? <laughs> you know, like Chad, once again, he's 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 having an all-star year, man. He's he's he's, uh, he's, do, he's, do, he's doing this and he's doing that for our team. So what what the best you know, we want your stick. We want your big stick on the on the field. So we're gonna put you in as our DH. 
So I'm like, you know what, coach? That I'm fine with that. Yeah. If I can hit every game, hey, sh- we good. dream job. I'm good with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dream, dream job. Yeah. So <laughs> DH and everything is good. And then Miles still on my back. You know, Chad, we don't see you in everyday rotation. You know, me and um, we were rotating, man. Gode, me and yeah. Gode were rotating <laughs> at DH. You know, so bam, I'm not in the lineup every day. Coach pulling me. Hey, coach, bless Miles. You know, hey, we got to get you back. You know, we got some new things. We're trying to put in still. We're trying to really do it this year. You know, that's when we still had Ryan Perlou was on the mm-hmm. team. We're trying to win that championship. Mm-hmm. Forgot you know, we're trying oh. to win that championship, you know. Um, so, so I'm understanding that, but I'm back in Coach Maneri's office. You know, Chad, it's the best we can do. Just so happened, our left-handed middle relief pitcher went down. I was say, please, please tell this part. This is the best part about it. And like I said, um, I said, hey, so we need a middle middle relief, you know, middle relief, you know, coach asking like like guys, you know, um left handed relief pitcher went down. Um We're gonna have to figure this out. Yeah, gotta figure this out, you know. Um so I'm just in hey, I'm looking at everybody and I'm like, I'm left handed. You know, coach uh, <laughs> I, I pitched, you know. You know, I pitched in high school. You know? Legit high like, like, school. Hey, hey Gr- Coach, I can throw. Grewish. What do you mean you can throw? Yeah, Gru, you saw me. I was in high school. We had, what, a perfect game? You, you saw me pitch. You know, I actually shook your hand. You know, you remember that? You, said, you know what? Cool, you know. So, uh, we doing drills the same day. I'm in outfield. You know, towards the end of practice, you know, I think we're doing some batting practice or whatnot. You know, towards the end of practice. You know, Gru, uh, no, Madari, you know, P Money. You know, he called me up. Um, Chad, you know, he said you uh, – Said you pitch, you know, hey, let's go check you on out. Let's get you in the bullpen. You know, I'm like, huh, yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah, you know, smiling ear to ear. You know, like, yeah, let's do this. Definitely. This is a, I, I would love to say this out. So, I'm just waiting for this. So I'm just jogging on over there in the bullpen, you know, Gruy waiting for me, you know, pen and pad, whole nine. You know, <laughs> pen and pad, whole nine. pad, the whole nine, you know. Um, but Gibbs in there. Now I'm trying, yeah, Gibbs at the time is over there shaking his hand. You know, I'm getting warm. You know, and I'm just saying, uh, I, I haven't pitched in, you know, what, four years, three years at this time, you know, three years at this time, but uh, but still loose, you know, from the outfield, because I had a cannon from the outfield, you That's know, can hit every bag. Um, so get on the mound, you know, and I'm just warming up and popping the mitt. Pop, everybody, you know, I'm, I'm paying attention in between yeah. pitches. Damn. I'm catching the ball, and every time I throw, everybody just staring at me. <laughs> you know, like I said, I'm talking about, you know, everything stopped, bat full, batting practice. Even uh, pitching coach turned on over to us and uh, just looking in there and I'm just cruising in there and I, I just hear Gruy on the on the walkie talkie. <laughs> coach, get down here! You gotta come see this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta come see this. And, you know, you know, see Paul in there. You know, you gotta see him rocking. See him rocking, get on there. We're gonna get on up there. And I'm telling you, you know, I'm 93, 92, and 92, and dotting up, dotting up. You Painting. Know? I'm talking about yeah, dotting up. You know? And this is kind of going on slightly during practice, like towards the end of practice. So, yeah. like, I remember kind of seeing this. Go ahead. I'll, I'll tell the story, like, from a different vent. Yeah, vent. towards the end of practice, whatnot. And, you know, and coach said, hey, look at. You got something else other than the fastball? You know, I was like, yeah, I'm saying throw a slider, you know. <laughs> so let me see it. Pow, 79. Pow, 81. 82, sliders. Like, hey, you know, and Coach Panera was like, he's like, You've always been able to do this? Jay, <laughs> Jones, you can pitch. He said, you can pitch. We might, we said, we might, we really could use you. We really could use you, you know. So I'm like, hey, well, you know, like I said, I'm ready. You know, I'm put, you know, I'm ready when you are, you know, but, um, I said, but coach, you know, I still would definitely like to hit. You know, I still right. like to do that. You know, so um, I said, get me on back out there. You know, um, I do, do run a little bit, just through a bullpen. You know, get the arm loose again, get the blood flow going. But um, but yeah, man, that was my first day. You know, I'm pitching, and and after that, it was a little quiet. Didn't hear anything for about um about another week or so. And then your first outing was against Auburn. Yeah, but, but but before Auburn that, weekend. before that, because he threw a he threw a simulated game. Like you know on what? The field. I sure yeah. did. I sure did. So wait, no the best, ways. The best part about sure it, I re, I'll never forget this. I think it was me, maybe Blake Dean, maybe Sean, and maybe like one other player that was kind of in the lineup every day. That coach like brought it over to the side. So like at this point, I'm a junior. Chad's a sophomore. Mike is a freshman. He like brought us over to the side and he was like, "Hey, we're gonna get Chad in there to throw a simulated game today." Any of y'all want to step in and hit? And we all looked at each other and then looked at him, like, and all of this saying, Hell no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> no clue where this yeah. is going. He hasn't right. pitched it forever. So he ended up hitting, like, Johnny Desha- I think you hit against no, him. No, right? no, it was Dozar, Deshaun, John, yeah. Nick Pontiff, Buzzy, 
I don't think I don't think there was a bat that was there. There might have been like one foul ball. Yeah. We got dudes diving out of way of like just nasty sliders, and we we're all like standing there like, what, the, what is going on? Like, right? He was dominant. <laughs> like nobody sniffed him. And then coach was like, all right, we're gonna try to get him in a midweek game. That's what he says. They're gonna try to get you in a midweek, midweek game. game right. So we're expecting like you're gonna throw against like Grambling or Alcorn State, exactly. someone that we play in the midweek game. We're playing Auburn, who has a hundred plus home runs as a team. And Chad comes in right. the middle of the lineup, and he has to face his first outing on Sunday with money on my mind playing in the background. It's my walkout song for, for batting. And then they obviously, um, Coach, uh, what, seventh inning? Seventh inning, what, we got? Seventh inning is two outs. Well, I about to say, before that, I mean, like, <laughs> get, it was, so we were playing well, right? We had started playing well again. I don't remember if we had, we were like, I don't remember. It was one. a Sunday game. I don't remember if we had one. Friday and Saturday. Off we did. Split. We were sweep. We're going for the sweep. We're going for the sweep. I got a pinch bump for that. Okay, game. we're going for the sweep. It's the middle of their lineup that's pretty much coming up. Yes. And then Chad comes out the dugout going to the bullpen. I look over at Mikey in the outfit. And I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said midweek game. <laughs> right now. Exactly. Exactly. Like I said, I'm, I'm picturing a midweek game, and you know, so I'm like, okay, we Auburn. You know, we got two wins. So I'm, I'm camping. You know, I'm, right. just, I'm just. Turfing. Just, yeah, it's not barely. By the way, hey, seriously, the best teammate go. you've ever had. Yeah, yeah, the happiest dude ever. The, like, just the best. Man, we had a great time. You know, like I said, just dugout days. Locker room. Oh, my goodness. You know? God, just, post-game uh, locker rooms are fun. That's the best. With Nick. With Nick, the on, the, with Nick on the, on the Nick chair and buzzer, dancing. Dancing. I still, man, extra long tights. Yes, I got it. I but, yeah, man. Um, but, yeah, like I said, coach calls me out there. I'm telling you, it's about seventh inning. We might be up by one. Down, we got two outs. Lefty on runners on second and third. Like okay, if this is not the not the worst time to bring in uh, someone that's pitching for the first time in what, four or five years. All right, I've, I've seen Max five batters in the last five, four, three years. You know, all in um, practice, all yeah, in a simulated game. Exactly, exactly. So man, um, I get out there. You know, um, like I said. Well, okay. how'd you feel though? Were you like nervous? Were you excited? Were Man, you like... the thing is that um, by that time, once I knew I was in there, I was I was getting ready. Once yeah. I was in that bullpen, that's when I was getting myself set, getting myself mindset, um, my mindset ready. Um, but that's when me being in front of all those people at LSU football, that's when that came yeah. into play. You know, so wasn't wasn't um, too much worry about the fans on the crowd. Um, just I remember the first few pitches or so, everybody had fans on the crowd first time. Um, Seeing Chad Jones go to the bullpen, you just hear the crowd just kind of start talking. You can feel the buzz. You can feel the buzz. You hear the baby buzz. The buzz was on the field, too, at the time. Everybody just talking. You know, the game's going on, but everybody talking and just really looking in that bullpen, you know. Um, And like I said, I really just got myself loose, let a few of them just really go to get the the jitters out of me in that bullpen. And, man, it felt great. You know, hit the mitt, you know, firm. Everything was good. And I'm trying to think who was in there at the time. I don't know who was at the bullpen at the time. But, man, getting on that field – I wasn't even worried. Didn't even see anybody else. It was just me and Micah. You know, and, that. um, that's a good guy to throw and to. Lil too, Wayne. Bro. And yeah. Lil Wayne. <laughs> Lil Wayne was always there. I'm telling you, he got me through so many things. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Wayne and Lil, Lil Wayne got me through hey, so many Hey, now we told the story though. You had a little. You had money on my mind. You only got 30 seconds as a, as your as your walkout as a hitter. Right. The other, the other part of the song was he had a time he had the time timed out perfect yeah, for, the, for, the, for the right part of yeah, it. Did. We didn't have it timed out perfect did in the stadium. He not have it timed out for coming out the bullpen two minutes in. And he right. is not as unedited. As as unedited. I love it. Moms, dads, grandpas, <laughs> kids, children, women, daughters, the whole nine. Chicken, birds, cats. Dog, oh, everybody. Man. You know it. Everybody um, understood uh, what, I, what I was all about. And you got out there. I got out there and did it. And, um, Chest bump buzzy. Man, chest bump, buzzy, you know, got Dude, fired we killed up. Him. No, you know what? No, reverse. Um, it, we had one out, so. Yeah, because you have my, the infield single. Yes, they had one out. We had one out. Pop fly, uh, first, uh, first, uh, first batter pop fly um, to outfield. I remember as if I was still in the outfield, I wind up and let I wind up letting the entire stadium know <laughs> that we had two. <laughs> I heard them two, man. I'm, hey, I'm thinking I'm still in the outfield. In the air, he puts his hands up, two outs. We got two outs. Out I had to make sure everybody knew. But man, you know, after that, man, like you said, it was just lights out. I was just started having fun after that. Yep. Um, got me a strikeout, man. And um, like I said, after that, it was just all over, man. God, it you was know? that was that was. Yeah, like I said, fun. the crowd went crazy. You know, I got pumped up, man. Buzzy, you know, always been. The first guy to run out on out, run on out there first for me, but man, I said uh, that's when I'm on my pitching days. Uh, back uh, got back reincarnated from high school. Man. Hey, Chad was uh, he was big. So when we hit homers, Chad was out there celebrating with us. Chad was a big 
put the hand in the pants guy and not let you run through the thing and pull you back. So if you go watch, I think in Omaha, if you go watch, if you go find the video of me like hitting the home run, you see the arm sleeve and holding on to my belt. And that's Chad holding on to my belt because he, he was trying to hold people back. He didn't want anybody man, to get through. Man, had a great time. But nothing but the best memories. I that think. was, man. That was a good season. That was a fun season. And the crazy that's, thing about it is we play, I was one year, but you act, we would act like we all played. I played with you for four years. Right. That's how close we got. You know what? It's funny. I never even really asked him that before, but it's kind of funny because I, I hear people, I get, I get asked all the time, like, how crazy was it playing in Tiger Stadium? I go, look, I'm going to be completely honest with you. It's loud. Like, it's really loud, but it's so loud and it's pretty much loud all the time that you become numb to it. Like, it's like yeah. as if it's not really happening. Yeah. I go, playing like baseball at LSU in Omaha. And because how because how baseball is like it's so unexpected. Yeah, yeah. Like I almost felt like those situations were louder and like way more just like, you're like amplified. Yeah, because like because it's, it's like, like it's, calm, 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 and something and then happens. It's like and it's, it's an straight eruption. eruption. Like it's yeah. not loud and then louder. It's yeah. just calm and then it's an eruption. I'm like, right. be honest with you. Like I remember like way more like louder and crowd engagement in those situations just because of the nature of the sport. Definitely. Definitely. So it's crazy hearing him basically say yeah, the same thing. Same thing. You know I mean? it's, it is, it's nuts. And it's, I don't think people like I. For me, like I, my whole life, I wanted to run out the tunnel to experience that on the football field right. because I don't. I didn't ever get to experience that. Right. But I can see how being on the field and being on the football field, like yeah, that initial run out, mm. right. yeah, it's one thing. But then once you get there and you kind of feel, it's like. I, I can see how it flatlines. Like, oh, it's just like a, a hum. Like, I mean, and, and you do it all week too. Like, yeah. you, I mean, like you heard it just being on the baseball field. Right. Like, we go through the week and we know it's going to be like a big game. There was crowd noise in practice. Yeah, like, there was speakers blaring. Th- so, like, yeah. it's, it all becomes just very, very like run of the mill for you in a way, kind of. You know yeah. what I mean? Definitely. Like I said, there's nothing to prepare for. You know, on ba- on the baseball diamond. You know, yeah. and you can feel the tension. You know, as the second seconds go. Yeah. You can feel the true crowd swings, the momentum swings, just with the snap of the. There's fingers. something about there's just something about baseball that's it's so unexpected. Like yeah. you could have 15 hits in the game as a team, but if it's a big game and it's a playoff game and the crowd's up. Getting a hit feels so like yeah. it's not supposed to happen. Right. Same right. thing as if you're on the other side of it, you play in the outfield and you feel like every strike is like the biggest thing yeah. ever. Like, oh my God, he threw another you're strike. You're on pins and needles, right? Yeah. So, like, it's just, there's something about just the, the nature like of the game. Like, those last outs in Omaha were like, oh, it probably feels like it took, took forever. forever. Like, yeah. come on, let's go, yeah. let's go, let's go. Because, like, we were winning and we're, we're up by like six or seven rounds. Like, come on. That's good, but it's like you never felt like you were safe until you got the third out. It was crazy. It's crazy. There's no tension like baseball tension. No, it's the only sport that can no. do that. Yeah. Where and it you can like feel it. Change. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you exactly. can feel it. And you can feel it. Yeah. One pitch, you're like, oh boy, something could happen yeah. here. Yeah. As far as football, though, right? Yeah. You go back to LSU football for a little bit. You had some big, big moments on the field, right? Like obviously, me watching football and appreciating football, like your Alabama sack on was it? Uh, Coyle John Burke? Parker Wilson. John Parker, Parker Wilson, Wilson yeah. right? Parker Wilson. The, the, the batted baseball. down, yeah. the batted <laughs> pass against Arkansas in the end zone where the guy's wide open. Was it Arkansas or Mississippi State? Uh, Mississippi State. Mississippi State. Where Mississippi the guy State. was wide open behind you, but then you mm-hmm. jump up and you bat the ball down. Like, what was your favorite moment that sticks out the most of, like, in your football career? Uh, my favorite moment in my football career, man. You know, um, it was just so it was so compact of what happened in that um, in that Mississippi State game. You know, the back end of that Mississippi State game, um, like I said, um, had that big punt return, yep. um, ninety three yards. Um, so proud to have that second longest punt return in LSU history. Happy to have that, and did that with my defense on the field. You know, um, with the guys that uh, I kind of you know blood, sweat, and tears. Had my brother on the field blocking for me. Those guys. Blocking for me to get me to um, to the end zone. You had Pat P waving you through. Pat, Pat P waving you through. Freaked out. Come back. What you doing? Like, I, mean, I, I, I always like to have fun with this. Like Patrick Peterson, he's another uh, you know athletically gifted beast. You know, yeah. um, but I'm yeah. telling you, I'm busting my tail, running as fast as I can, and he's just literally looking at me. So <laughs> waving his arm, and, and I'm trying to run perfect for him. You know, just driving towards him. But that man, like I said, he's just so fast. You know, and um, like I said. He led me around there, and like I said, I had that touchdown. But um, those last three defensive plays that we were on the field um, made the tackle on the quarterback on the goal line. Um, then that was the play we were talking about just now, batting that ball down. Um, and then also uh, making the last, the third play in a row. So made the last three plays. <laughs> you won the you know? game. Yeah. So yeah, so had game a time great only. Game, yeah. Yeah. Game, game time only, great coach. Game, great game time only. I, I mean, for me, I was always, 
it was it was very synonymous with like LSU defense for like a ten year period of really good safety play. And one of the, like the plays that we were that was always in it was a nice like safety blitz. So like the Alabama sack was like yeah very trademark of the LSU and yeah. of like yeah. his career because you he was always here. especially at that point in time like against Alabama right. you knew that someone would, on the defense was you could go make from like the you could go from like the Jesse Daniels to yep. the Leron Landrys yep. to the Craig Stelts to the Curtis Taylors yeah. to Chad's like the safeties there, were, there was a play. big play that was always like there was always yeah. a big safety blitz so like seeing that was like. Very synonymous with LSU football at the time. So no that was doubt. pretty cool. Definitely, man. Like I said, that's uh, what they so-called say. That's how the West was won, you know, the SEC West yeah. that day. You know, um, But, yeah, so many plays, man. You know, playing on the field against Tim Tebow, Percy Harvey. But you knocked down the last Florida pass, team. didn't you, yeah, the Hail Mary? Did, did that as well. You know, um, no playing, no playing against certain players, you know, um, playing against with the most recent Super uh, playing against Stafford, you know, um, when he was at when he was playing, came down to LSU, mm-hmm. played against him and no Sean Moreno, you know, like I said. What year was that? That was nice. Like, that was the nice. year after That's we right. won it in, in football. Yeah, That's right. I mean, in baseball. Yeah, like I said, playing those type of games and, you know, just certain, certain memories. You know, going to Kentucky, unfortunately, we lost that game. Um, but had a big interception um, there. You know, playing the National Championship in my hometown, yeah. you know, New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, being able to do that, you know, it's just uh, so, so many great memories. But I'm telling yeah. you about nothing, by far by nothing. Baseball, helmet off, you know, on the mound. Game starts when you start. You know, um, feeling that pressure, yeah, you being, able to, it. being able to maintain it and also dominate it, you know, nothing else better than a better feeling that. than that. Hey, so I don't know if you, uh, so my, one of my favorite, I guess this is kind of like a a credit to how freakishly athletic you are, right? Hmm. So Chad is 2009, it's our run through Omaha, right? And like you said, Les Miles has been on his ass about going back to football. At this point, Les knows, hey, he's not coming right now. He's playing. He's in, they're in the postseason. He's doing all this stuff. Well, Chad is supposed to be working out with baseball. So he's, but he's telling baseball he's working out with football. And football thinks he's working out with baseball, so he's not working out anytime. <laughs> but we're on the road all the time in the postseason, and every Thursday you get pizzas. Everybody's got this pizza. So, Chad, who's your roommate on the road? Ooh, Do you remember? Was my roommate on the road. Um, was it Leon? Definitely. Yeah, Leon, for sure. So they eat, they're crushing pizzas, right, on the road on Thursday. So Chad, and like Chad, what, like Chad, like what was your playing weight in football? 235? 232. Oh, yeah, 232. Depends no. on if it was working out or and not. And so Chad's not working <laughs> out. So Chad gets on, and so they find, the football team finds out. This is this. I'm getting the story secondhand, so you can correct me if I'm no, wrong. You got it. You got it. You got it. So we, he finds out. They find out towards the end of Omaha that Chad has not been working out. So to punish Chad, they said they call him and say, "Hey, we we're going to give you some time off when you got back, but you got to go do your conditioning test the minute you get home." Mm-hmm. And we had like our celebration stuff, and their conditioning test is 26 one tens. Right. Chad's in the defensive back, so what do you have to run in? Thir- 15, 15 seconds. Se- under 15, 15 seconds. seconds. Right? Yep. And Chad's probably what? 242? 245. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing 250. Hey. You know, Chad's I'm like, happy. all right, y'all need me there? I'll be there. Indeed. You start seeing the loops wear out on the belt. It's going you know, on the next. And he shows up, and this man makes every single one of them. And when I heard the story, I was like, damn. This dude's 15 to 17 pounds heavier than his playing weight. And he crushed the 26 110s, having not working out one time in the last two months. This guy's an absolute freak show. Because trust me, let me just tell you, running the 26 110s, he can he can attest to it, bro. We've seen some wild, some wild stuff. Bro. <laughs> oh, I bet. My gosh. His brother was one of them. We've seen some wild stuff happen <laughs> to where he, it's just absolutely. like, yo, like that's it's not easy to do. It ain't easy to do at all. Definitely. The big question is. You and your brother got in a fight. Okay. Who wins? Man, my brother's ferocious. He's right? the scariest but so do you not I've ever seen. He's his brother. Ferocious. He, I know who his brother is. He's the scariest. <laughs> I didn't ferocious. want to look him in the eyes, but he I, I, he he came to our tailgates after the game. Remember, my mom, we have the RV at the party box. Absolutely. They'd have the RV, and we would cook, and they all come, and like uh, his brother's awesome. But if you don't know him and you look at him, I don't, don't want to look at him in the eyes. I think he's going to eat me. He's scary. <laughs> well, put it like this. Uh, he'll be the last person that I ever want to go to, go to, war, go to war against. But, uh, but I'm also not in the business of losing either. That's so it. I know. I bet, Did I bet he used to wear the chain link, like, 
necklace around his neck all the time? Didn't he have like Q-Dog, a Q-Dog, yeah, yeah. Q-Dog, <laughs> man. Omega Sci-Fi. Yes. yes, indeed. Yeah, yes, indeed. Shout out um, shout out Raheem. You know, shout out to Raheem. Uh, what's he doing now? And he's actually uh, just graduated law school, man, from Loyola, Loyola Law. Yeah. Can you imagine him in a courtroom talking to the judge and, and having the, defend, the, the opposing counsel looking at you? Like, damn, this guy, I'm... St- this guy's what, enormous. He's a lawyer. Want, sir. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 sir. Whatever you say. Whatever you say. Whatever you say. Yes, sir. Well, well yes, sir. hopefully that um, works out to his benefit. So, no doubt. Yeah. That's awesome, that's though. Indeed. That's that's a Loyola Law School. That's a, that's a tough place to I object. To graduate from. Okay. Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. Sure. Whatever you want. Okay. You Whatever you he say. Got it. He knows what he's talking about, too. Um, what do you have? What's your feelings on the the new regime change? Well, I guess there's two of them. The regime man, change in baseball and I, I, I'm excited, man. I'm 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 going to be real nosy this year. So I'm going to poke my nose around, yeah. show face. Have you met hands. have you met Brian Kelly? Have not yet. Have okay. not yet. Um so like I said, haven't met anybody. Yet. I haven't met new baseball staff or new football staff. So like I said, I'm going to be snooping around and Yeah, you got to you know, go, shake go hands, introduce yourself. You know, come on now. Let's Walk in there. Now. Come on now. Say what's up. Um you have anybody you have you have any questions for Chad or no, nothing? I was going to say, uh, not many people denied Tim Tebow's prayers, and Chad Jones knocked down the Hail Mary. So I just tell you, you're <laughs> rarefied air up there. Uh, nice, nice. Rarefied air. I might have to take that one. Boy, how long have you been waiting to say that? Yeah, that, was, that, was pretty good. that was pretty good, man. I thought about it immediately because I missed my moment, so I was like, I'm going to bring yeah, it back. That was pretty good. That not let this Florida good. talk go by. I'm going to take that one no. from you. Oh, yeah, man. That's yours. My gift oh. to you. Well, yeah, I mean, that's. Did you get any questions online? Oh, I mean, we got yeah, plenty yeah. of questions. Yeah, I'll go through them real yeah, quick. Yeah, not a problem. Questions. I got you. I got you. I mean, tell me you'd be looking at the stuff. I'm trying to do I both. Was, well, I was enamored. You're getting distracted. I was enamored with the chat. Hold on. And then I was looking up Raheem alone. I got scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Ash CJ, Andrew Messina. If you can take us back to the College World Series when he K'd up Texas and comes off the pounding his chest, just give us a quick run through of that, if you don't mind. What's going through your mind? Man, well, like I said, um, it was just at that point on the back end of the season. Um, been I've been to the championship level before, you know, um, with LSU, LSU football, um, and I knew that um, being on this team was something special. And I knew what, what, what the team did um, to get there. When I was there, I knew what they did without me. And by me coming back on the team, I was supposed to be an add-on, you know, to um, to get us more successful. So um, I just came with that intensity and the focus, you know, that I knew I could deliver. But man, being on the field. Uh, and to be able to dominate Texas and have the strikeouts, um, and I was just in my groove, man. Like I said, didn't imagine if anybody was out, any, anybody was out there with me, me and Mikey, and just delivering and pumping as hard as I could, you know, throwing every pitch as hard as I could. But uh, when it was all said and done, you know, um, I was as you as you could tell, I was a little excited. So you, you know? should be. Had, so, had a, it was my time, and uh, just had a saw buzzy. Great. <laughs> so, I, the man. so I guess to build on that. Being a part of two championships at LSU, yeah. two different teams, did you or did you not? Are y'all see? the two, only two that ever do that in college football? So they say. I, I mean, that's not something I ever looked up, but that's what I've heard. <laughs> so they say. You know, <laughs> that's, so they that's what say, I've heard. Um, like I say, you never know. They might have somebody in the sixth. Yeah, yeah. That's what they say. I don't know. The best you know, parts of history. Who, right? so who knows? So wait, um, being, being a part of two championships with two different teams, characteristic wise, <laughs> did you see a lot of similarities between the two different teams? Because um, I have my own take on that oh, as well. well. I want to hear that both. Absolutely. Though. Okay, so my first day is walking on the field, you know, um, training training camp with a LSU as a football player. You know, I'm talking about you got your Matt Flynn's out there. You got your Glenn Dorsey's. You know, you got your Tyson Jackson, your early Doucette's, real big timers. How good was that team? You know what I'm saying? We yeah. have r- real, real big timers, you know. And, um, you know, being on that field, I, I knew they had something special, so – me coming as a new guy, the young guy, just like anything I've ever been a part of in my life, it's time to prove yourself, Chad. You know, got to show that you can roll with the big boys. You know, so uh, just coming out there, you know, uh, learning from them. The person who I learned the most from early as a as a Tiger it was early Doucette. You know, um, Tiger baby. Show I'm telling you before Martin, before he hurt his knee. You know, um, yeah. early was one of the most. Uh, like since I played football and kind of see a lot of people, he's one of the best receivers that has, that has um, that I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, 
Facts. Um, yeah, one freak. Of, yeah, you know, like Facts. I said, I'm talking about strongest, dominant, you know, speed, ball skills, strongest Jump, ball hands. skills, all of Yeah, it. everything. You know, he's um, overall one of the best receivers that I've ever seen. You know, in one of the best athletes time. I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah one of the best know. athletes, for, for, first and foremost, is what? Didn't he have some basketball scholarships? Oh, bro, he had yeah. some, some, he had some basketball scholarships. We talking before. I saw him dunk over Perry yeah. Stevenson. He played at bad Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. I saw him jump side. over someone at Wesley. Yeah, I'm on the show. I remember he had, like, crazy basketball scholarships. Him and also Harry Coleman, you know, big-time basketball player. Player. He, um, but he played LSU football. Yep. But yeah, early was about you know showed me the ropes, you know, and 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 and, and let me know a little bit real real fast. I need to get better, you know. I came in there good, you know, of course a little bit of a big head, but with an edge. But um, yeah. early showed me that hey, I need to get a little better, and um, he showed me the work ethic. Yeah, you know, I never seen anybody work as hard as early did, you know, on the football as a football player. Yeah, I've never seen anybody like that. And then what about baseball? I compare that to. Like the that mentality yeah. of football, like did you still see the same thing on the baseball field, like with the with the well, team, or well, is it first a little different? And, first and foremost, like coming to LSU, knowing the legacy of uh, what was expected. You know, you come in town. Um, like I said, I, this is when um, the old Alex Box was there. You know, that same sinus in um, in right field. You know, you see all those championships. You know, yeah. in in such a short period of time. And then you see right next door is Tiger Stadium. And then you see that track field and you're just looking at all these championships. You know, you know you're out of the place to where, yeah. you know, it, it deserves um deserve hard work. But coming on that field, you know, uh, the name, the Pontiff, you know, the name, uh, Lewis Coleman, you know, seeing the big timers, you know, seeing how tall Anthony Renato is in person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, just, you know, he's saying, guys, you know, coming from all over, Jared Mitchell, you know, someone I was comfortable with. I knew him already. You know, Leon, Leon I knew him already. Um, like I said, wh- wh- whoever this big timer got this guy's name, who who is the DJ LeMahieu? You know, <laughs> get, get, getting there and very seeing, and like getting there. Who's and like said, who, very yeah, true. who's this guy? You know, the, who's Nola? You know, who's uh, who's uh, you know Austin Nola? You know, like I yep. said, and, you know, young guys like you, you know, hearing these names and you know, and a lot of a lot of upside. You know, play, players that got drafted out of high school. You know, turned it down. You know, people people that you know that I would consider that was you know that was like me. You know, um, real supreme high end athletes. Not you know, because I, I grew around, grew up around it football wise, but baseball kind of did my own thing. Of course, I did the perfect games, and you know, um, Atlanta, you know what? Yeah, Cape Cod, Cape Cod. You yeah. know, did, did yeah. all those. You know, USA, Joplin. You know, tryouts. Yeah. yeah. But man, you know, being able to know that hey, this is our team. This is what we could do. You know, us versus them. You know, I knew we had something special, and you know, like I said, you guys did it already. Blake Dean, you guys, uh, you know, you guys went to the. Um, to the World Series a couple of years before I came on the team, so still had guys there, people that did it already. Yep, senior base team, um, and you know, like I said, just, 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 you know, feeling that seniority. You, yeah, know, you can um, feel, you can feel, you can feel. No like one came, was you know, like it's just, you know, no yeah. one came. Just knowing, you know, just be, some people that have been there, you know, coming from Turtle Thomas, you know, yep. just bringing yep. the true yep. championship tradition, and then that band. Now they got all this money, brand new stadium. You know, we get to break it in with the type of team that we got. Like, man, like let's let's go do it. I love that. You know, let's go do it. Do you, do you think that y'all played baseball with like a football mentality a little bit? No because doubt. when you talked about the celebration, like the trying to get through the huddle, no it looked doubt. very football. And you had obviously you played high school football very good. Obviously, mm-hmm. you have two guys that played college football. <laughs> so always watching from you know a thousand foot view, it felt like the way that you played baseball was we almost had, with like a football mentality. We had seven high school quarterbacks on our team, right? We went to a post-game party at Lewis Coleman's house in the postseason. <laughs> right. And we all brought our highlight films, and Chad sat down and had to grade our highlight films as the quarterbacks. I was number one. Yeah, outside, yeah. outside the one that didn't play football because they couldn't they right. couldn't be yeah. on there. We weren't on it. Stuff. They weren't on it. They couldn't be on it because they didn't play that. football. <laughs> we probably said, they said, we were drunk, of course. Right. And under, uh, we were of age. We weren't mm. underage. <laughs> Okay. And okay. Uh, right. we bring the highlight films to the says, Hey, y'all bring y'all bring the film. Let's put, let's put some tape on there. Let's see. Yeah, let's put the film on. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, hey, tape don't lie. I and Scott don't lie. Yep, nice. Like that's when I noticed that. Hey, Mikey is a true athlete. You know, <laughs> outside outside of this thing we call baseball. It yeah. is funny though, because like it just I remember like the whole thing went like mm-hmm. the team we had on the football side of it, and then the team we had on the baseball side of it. You, you would have, t- like, they didn't hang out together, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't like, and it wasn't like beef or anything. Like, we just, they, they didn't hang out together. Mm-hmm. But they were, like, so alike on both sides. Like, it was just a whole bunch of the same like minds, thinking the same way, acting the same way, doing the same type of things. And I was like, I mean, for me, that allowed me to understand right then and there 
what winners do, like how yeah. winners are. I'm exactly. like, I, like seeing that and especially going through professional ball and seeing so much of that. I'm like, the teams that I've been on that have been close to that have been successful teams. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And that's just, I think that's why you see like a lot of the crossovers. So like you friends, like LaFell and all those guys that yeah. you're friends with, all the yeah. guys that you're mm-hmm. friends with. And like we, when we cross paths, there's no like, it's like a wondering it's all, everybody yeah. everybody fits in everybody like hangs out and there's no problem because everybody has the same like minded right. like the like mindedness everybody yeah, has right. that same mentality and this the mutual respect of like damn all right you did the same thing i did just in a different sport yeah you know what i mean which is a kind of a cool thing to do and that's i mean that's how you build a culture a winning culture within an organization not yeah. just one sport but yeah. through all the sports here mm-hmm. i think that's the coolest that's the coolest thing Last question before I let you go. Oh, I've got a couple more. Okay, you go okay, for it. Okay, we're just no. saying, I was saying, there's rumors, for. rumors oh. that Paul Maneri wanted you to chop the dreadlocks of doom. Ha 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 ha, yes. <laughs> there was. There was. It was the dreadlocks of doom and the facial hair. Okay, so. Um, so yeah. Very true. Very true. So, so, but, yeah, so, um, so him, uh, so yes, there was a time, this is before everything, this is before he even seen me do any type of playing at all. Okay, uh, you know, I think um, after a batting practice or two, you know, and, um, you know, me uh, actually playing a game or two, you know, showing that I can actually play a little ball, you know, he kind of um, loosened, up. loosened up on the <laughs> roots because he noticed that I was. So it all came back to, okay, I was on football scholarship. On right. yeah. I was on football scholarship, so football scholarship rules, okay? So yeah. that's really what it came down to. So I was in I was in code, so first and foremost. But um, but like I said, but Coach Maneri, I'm telling you, he treated me um, – you know, um, like I said, me being coming in and off the team and coming in late and kind of doing stuff out of the traditional ways of, I'm not sure how he would do things, you know, uh, the way that he was treated to me, the way he, he coached me, you know, by, by our none, you know, I'm a great coach, you know, I'm one of the better coaches that I've had in my lifetime, you know, so like I said, I got a lot of respect for Paul Maneri, put me in great positions to win, you know, um, put me in positions to prove myself, you know, and um, like I said, and I came out on top of him, so. Um, Hats off to Coach Paneri, man. You know, shout out to P Money. Shout out to P Money. Who gave Who gave him P Money? We all did. <laughs> we got all did. It, was, it was like a mutual thing. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. It was crazy. It was we crazy. uh, it just kind of like I don't even know. I think for a long time he didn't even know we called him that either. Yeah, that was something we just in the ping pong, playing ping pong, <laughs> yeah. pong, you know, in the back, you know, just P Money. P Money. Like yeah, I don't know. I don't know how who came up. I mean, somebody had to say it first. Yeah. And like, if I was willing to bet, it'd probably be someone along the lines of like Sean or someone like Sean that. Sean or Buzzy or something. Sean like. Yeah, Buzzy. someone that's like yeah. pretty witty. Creative. Yeah, that was a, that's how I go chinko all day, putting a little money on it. Yeah, <laughs> for, for P money, for sure. My God. Oh, go if it came down to it, and he said you have to cut your hair or you can't play baseball. Man, like I said, make a long story short, man, I would have cut my hair. Nice, you know, eh? I, love, I love, love the game. You know, um, like I said, it really, really isn't that important to me, you know, hair wise. You know, as a young. But you kept the same look since college, right? About well, like I said, much, I had a full much. head. Hey, you know, I tried yeah. to kind of I mean, clean it similar, up. similar, like not. You know, the, the, young, the young me. The Reds did me. make you cut it, right? Now, yes. Now, the Reds, yeah, now they had a. Um, they had a rookie, um, a rookie um, just a rookie rule. You know, um, your hair couldn't uh, cover up your. Je- your hair couldn't touch your jersey. Um, and my hair was well past my name touching my numbers, you know. So they, so they, so they, can't, they compromised with me. They asked me if I could trim it more so, you know. And I was just so happy and so excited and was so ready to be a professional athlete, you know, because I've been through a lot at that time. Yeah. It, it, it really didn't matter. I was like, I'm not trimming it. I'm cutting it off. You know, yeah. brand new me, brand new look, you know. But um, as time came after that first haircut. You know, the real me started coming back, and I started growing that hair back. <laughs> you know, so, um, so I've had hair, but I've had dreads, what? I had locks about three, four, four times. Three, yeah. I mean. Love that. All yeah. right, so my last question, and we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get you out of here. You can wait till we're, we're gonna, probably going to have a couple segments after this, but it's not going to be long. You can either leave, stay, whatever. But I watched, you because you were a year before me, or two, a year before me, because football fall, I came in yeah. that next fall. You're a yeah. year ahead of me in that. But I watched the Arkansas game mm-hmm. when <laughs> you almost killed yourself and the receiver. All right. Right? Yeah. To me, that is the probably the best, the biggest hit that I've seen you have the in hits. really college football. It seemed like you got the worst of that, though. Well, I'm saying <laughs> I, I was strongly 
to feel the other way. Um, first and foremost, <laughs> what Joe Adams, Joe Adams was about yeah. a buck eighty five, you know, buck ninety, so wet. Okay, um, his murdered. helmet, man. his helmet weighed a buck eighty five, yeah. right? Right. right? right. Um, so like I said, I actually he caught a forearm. You know, he caught a mean forearm first, then the shoulder, then the helmet. His helmet exploded. <laughs> you know, I think he kind of lost where he was. He was kind of walking into the ground a little bit, yeah. but. Uh, Man, he definitely caught the brutal end of it. But, man, a lot of people think that that was my head. I actually sprained my meniscus on that that play. play. Yeah. I actually sprained my meniscus. That's why I was on that ground because my my leg was numb. I couldn't – I didn't know what was going on. (laughs) Yeah, because it looked like – I thought I thought it was like you knocked the wind or something. Like, I thought you couldn't breathe. You knocked yourself out. Yeah, Yeah. but it was a knee. A lot of people thought that I might say it was my head. I was woozy. Mm -hmm. I knocked the wind on myself. But it was just most on my knee. I was just getting my – there we go. Joe Adams. That's you know, a clean hit. That's, I'm that telling you. That's just, so first, it was my full, it was my full arm hit him first. Look at how first contact. Look at how big that helmet is, bro. <laughs> that's <laughs> that was that's like that was the new type of helmets, like the yeah. revolution type of helmets, not those uh, like, shut shut helmets. Um, yeah, but man, I said he definitely caught. I was what two thirty six right there, two thirty two. Like playing free safety, the game too. Yeah, running through dudes. But like, like if I didn't make that play, if I didn't make that collision, he was in the end zone. He caught it. You know, yeah. we'd have been we would have been losing. You know, uh, my last home game. You know, like I said, that was my brother's last home game, our seniors' last home game. So uh, put it on the line for the uh, for so the upperclassmen. You still have that helmet. I actually do. Yes, I do have that that helmet. You know, and I have, the jer- wear, I have, the, I have that whole that. uniform. Hang, hang that was on. a clean. I have yeah. that home that uniform. Was a the clean pants, the jersey, yeah. the helmet. Joe all Adams' that. blood all over. <laughs> the, the, the whole nine. The whole nine. Yes, um, well, dude, thank you so much, bro. We, this, I know we've been talking about this for a few weeks. I'm glad we finally got to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know who that was? Yeah. Who you hit? Man, I don't know his name, um, but I do know. He knows yours. He definitely knows my own. He knows hey, look. Like, well, I just made just made jump right back up, though. He didn't, he didn't know where he was at. <laughs> he didn't know where he was at. He didn't know where he was at. He said, oh, no. <laughs> But and he, that was, I think that still opens up uh, Friday Night Lights out here in Baton Rouge. High school it? football. Yeah. I still that. believe. You should. It should that. never leave. But yeah, man, um, like I said, brought, brought my son with me, wanted him to yeah, meet man. you guys. Yeah. You know, Look, uh, I, I, you don't remember me, but I, you were running around the locker room when you were just a little bitty boy. You ain't a little bitty no more. I like to see no. you the same size, but no. Yep. Not really. Nope. No way bigger. Nope. Man. I'm glad you got to come in, man. Yes. That's special, and he, uh, he's bro. a football player in his own right. Yeah, he's he a football not? player. He's yeah. in eighth grade right now. Uh, moving in ninth grade next year. He's what position? Just, what position you play? Linebacker. That's a yeah, he's, he's actually just uh, he's just moving to Baton Rouge, so he actually um he um actually gonna be going to Southern Lab. Okay. Hey, follow him, follow him, follow him. Right, yeah, we're right. so, uh, okay. yeah, we gonna make that official today. So today that's is a good day. Today is a good day. Nice. It is a good day, man. That's a scary eighth grade linebacker coming at me. I'm good. I'm not gonna. I'm not happy with that. I ain't lowering my shoulder. I'm gonna go and slide. The race to the sideline. Yeah, race to the sideline. Race you there. I'll get out. Brian Kelly, are you watching? Brian Kelly, are you here? We don't hear about him. Class of twenty. True. What is that? Was he eighth grade this year? Eighth grade this year. Grade. Class of twenty seven. So twenty six. Twenty twenty six. Class of twenty twenty six. There you go. Middle linebacker. You'll hear about him. Let's go. Let's go, go Tigers. There you go. Let's do it. There you go. Let's do it. Done. Chad, bro, I love you, bro. Thank you so much. Man, I appreciate so we gotta you. Guys get you we'll get you back on at some point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Talking football, definitely. talking baseball, doing something Let's over the summer. Let's get the season going. Yeah. yeah. Let's get the season going and bring we'll get you. Back, we'll get you. We got, we got plenty of other stories to tell. Oh, uh, we have. Know. We didn't even on touch on the story. They don't understand, dude. We could literally sit here all day. Like, that's the kind of bond we have. Our stuff that we used to do. Oh, God, bro. If we videoed that, that would get. Yep. Views, oh. uh, thousands and thousands. That would of blow views. up. Great yeah, yeah. 100%. the stories Great and stuff that we get. Some of them. R. I. P. Ruffin. R. I. P. Ruffin. R. I. P. Ruffin. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and some of those stories definitely can't be told. Definitely yeah. cannot be told. <laughs> Come on, they man. can't reshare. Yeah. They can't reshare. Um, always. Only at night. Man, God, we didn't talk about the fair cash. We didn't talk about the. And he got picked off at first. Like, there's so many, <laughs> oh my goodness! There's so many, there's so many, I forgot about that one. So many, like, we like we could do this for a long time. I know. That's what we got him back. We'll, we'll have him back. We'll have him back. We'll have part two, and it'll just be story time. It'll be Chad Jones story time. There you go. Uh, all right, we're gonna take a little bit of break. We'll come back. We have a couple segments. We didn't even get to our betting segment. We're gonna get that to the end. Uh, we're gonna let Chad, Chad get out of here or stay, whatever he wants to do. Uh, thank you all for staying with us. Thank you all for asking questions. And uh, you're watching Mike Up. We'll be right back.
Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Mike Up. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports, have a ton of guests in here, get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house, Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us, it's okay. Just get us out there, show, share us out there. We having fun, we want to share our fun with you. Like I said, Mike Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 1. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See y'all. Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Mike Up. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports, have a ton of guests in here. Get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house, Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us, it's okay. Just get us out there, show, share us out there. We having fun, we want to share our fun with you. Like I said, Mike Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 1. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See y'all. Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Mike Up. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports, have a ton of guests in here. Get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house, Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us, it's okay. Just get us out there, show, share us out there. We having fun, we want to share our fun with you. Like I said, Mike Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 1. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See y'all. to me you did it again welcome back to mike dove how awesome was that interview chad is electric. one of a kind and electric. golden and literally i think i don't think people realize what chad's love for baseball was like what just happened oh that happen? got a little action right. moving yeah there we go hold on um i don't i don't think people realize how much chad loved ba actually loved truly loved baseball and i think that was a good kind of peak peek into like what really I mean he said if he could do it all over again he'd focus on baseball that's a that's a it's crazy a big statement. statement for someone that got to the heights that they did in football I mean and honestly, the heights that he even should have been at because changed, we all know he was part of the he was part of the evolution of the safety position yeah you know what I mean like Chad, Chad literally came in as when he came in it was the downhill knock your socks off type of type of safety and stuff that's what it was when he came in, he was all of that that could have, that had ball skills. Yeah, he was and all he, of that he, with ball skills. I mean, think about it, dude. He was punt returning at two hundred thirty plus pounds. Yeah, he taking the ball ninety three yards for a touchdown. What's that tell you? You know? Yeah, that's, I mean, God, and he's and he, as good of an athlete as he is. He's like he is one of my favorite human beings. I've ever. Right, he's one of the best. I, I tell people this all the time. I'm like, Chad is probably the best teammate I've ever been around and had. Like, there was never a dull day, never a down day. And you don't usually find that with guys with the physical ability that he has. Like, that's that's hard to find. Yeah. Oh. And so for him to come in in the situations that he did and was, like, genuinely, outwardly, just happy to be in the dugout and be in a uniform. Like, that, that shit was, yeah, it was awesome. Real. That shows you how much he liked it. Like if Love even it. how much he stuck around, he's like, I should be playing somewhere, Paul. Like I don't know we, what we have to do to get bro, me out we, here. We, but we told that to we so told badly. that story about him, like you know, being like he was so confused as to how pitchers couldn't throw strikes. Yeah, but it wasn't from a like that should be me throwing. He was just like, I just don't get it. That's how good he is. That's how like how simple he made the game. Yeah. Like, hey, just I got to throw the ball over the plate and get this guy out. I can do that. But and it was never from so like hard. a it was never from a spiteful mind right. like why is he getting that opportunity I'm not it was just like a you saw what so he said good. he said hey I gotta go prove it to people I gotta yeah. go prove it yeah. to people and that is the different mindset right that's the mindset that you don't really have you don't really see as much today I, I feel like I still think that's like a like I think that's something that people don't understand enough like it doesn't matter if you are the number one rated athlete or the number nothing rated athlete like the mindset to to want to get the opportunity to go and prove it and not thinking it's just given to you is what turns people to you know be able to do special things in no doubt in situations you know no doubt i'm glad we finally got him in here yeah it took a little while but we got him yeah it's it was all, worth it was, the wait it was every bit worth it it was every bit worth the wait um we're going overtime. Lloyd's very happy about us going overtime. I think Lloyd's double checking his bets right now. I am. I'm big. I'm sending them to the. We need to. We need to add an overtime. Hey, we, we need to add an overtime clicker that we just put up there every time. Ooh, we go overtime. Time and a half. 
Ooh, a little Lloyd, a little Lloyd, a little Lloyd graphic with the OT up That's here. That's right. Yeah. And then I just, I just flash it. It'll tell you that we've there done it. Like yeah. Stop looking at the clock all again. Lloyd yeah. smiling with a little Lloyd overtime. Yeah. Thing. yeah, I like that. Look, Lloyd we're making T. some moves over here. Making some moves. So we have, obviously, our guy came in with some picks today. We have our March Madness picks. We're getting asked about in the chat right now. Where can you fill a bracket out? We have the bracket challenge, the FM Digital Bracket Challenge. We're going to be posting it. Promoting it on all of our social medias. Uh, it's not too late to fill out the bracket. I think the deadline is noon tomorrow to be able to get your brackets in. I think that's when the deadline of 11 o'clock tomorrow is what I've been told by central, the boss baby. man. Central, central. That if you don't get it in by then, you're out. And we are putting it in the chat right now so that you can click on it. You don't have to wait for our tweets or anything like that. But... Bracket challenge is up and ready. You're going to get merchandise. You're going to get uh, the winners are going to get uh, gear from the Jordy Collada show and Mike Up shows. So we got some cool things going out. The better, the more we grow, the more followers and subscribers and likes we get, the more, the cooler the prizes get. So that's incentive for y'all to follow FM Digital, follow the Jordy Collada show, follow the Mike Up show, like, share, tell your friends, talk about it. We talk about it. Be about it. Talk about it. And get put it, it on while you sleep. You know, yeah, what you, fall asleep to it. I don't know how you fall asleep to this show. I don't think this show's a, a fall asleep to show, but go ahead. Thank try. You. Yeah. Let us get in your ear holes when you go to sleep. I was waiting for you to come back with something. You're you're locked in. Because that's a yeah, that's definitely working. a he's working. That was definitely a Lloyd comment to I where know, he's I gonna I felt it and I couldn't say anything. I know. I, can he's, only, I know. know he's working. He's working. working more than one thing at a time. He's getting uh, he's getting the, the bets up in there. We have a what's for lunch. We kind of change that up. We're gonna do the bets first. So here is our bets. I didn't finish so, the graphic. <laughs> Lloyd didn't finish the graphic. That's okay. So this is a 10-leg parlay that Lloyd, we put together. Don't have to take all 10 bets. But you should. We should. We're going to have the actual true graphic because what Lloyd likes to do is Lloyd likes to take the lines and he likes to move the lines, which you can do on Barstool Sportsbook. And he likes to change it and, and buy some buy half points. So when you move here. it, what do we like to call it, Lloyd? What do we call it? What do you just call it? Just a little, little, little tickle. tickle me. A little tickle. tickle. Just a little tickle. <laughs> just a little tickle. A little tease. Not a complete tease. Just a little no, tickle. No, no, just a little tickle. <laughs> just a little tickle. Now, it's all you... above the table here, boys. <laughs> now, if you want to do that 10 team parlay, that's a plus 6,400. Oh, I'm not messing up. Thousand. Plus 64208. You, whatever that number is. Where would you put the comma? 64,208. That's what it is. Huh? Where would you put the comma? After the four. There you go. I just didn't know how to say it as a betting expert. Thing. You know what I mean? But these bets. When we put our graphics up individually on our Twitter, my bets have different lines, and some of those are different than his, this, and some of Lloyd's are different. We are going to compare, when it's all said and done, whose lines were more effective than the others, because Lloyd is scared, and Lloyd wants to pay, give away money to get easier lines, which I understand, because he wants to give money. I want more money on the back end, so I'm going to take the bigger risk, which is okay. It's fair. Our guy did send some picks out. He has some hockey picks, which, like we've said before, if he has some hockey picks, you probably hammer it because oh, true. he has been. But he has been a little cold lately. A little cold. That's why this guy, you know, I'm not saying to run away from our guy. What's cheating? This, this guy. What's cheating on our guy? Hot, 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 hot. This guy is. Hey, that's just proof of performance. That's what we really didn't even, We didn't even get to hit in, hit on college basketball a little bit today, but we uh, we had Chad, Chad like surprised us Chad with a special was. guest. So that's we uh, we gave him. This is a Chad Jones day. Absolutely. Not, not a March Madness day. We'll, Floor's yours. We'll be able to, uh, we'll talk about March Madness on Friday when we have our show from Fred's, which like I said, we are going to talk to the guys at Fred's and see what we can do to promo, get some guys, that get some get y'all there to watch basketball, watch the LSU game at 6. LSU baseball game is at 6.30. Got a lot of stuff happening. Do we have the What's for Lunch spinner? The spinner is coming. Hold on one second. I got to download the website. Jeez. Wait, where did it go? Jeez and Pete's. I had the spinner. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. We're talking. We are talking. Lloyd said talk amongst yourselves. Um, do you have any upset bets? Today? No. 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 For the for like March. Do you have like a sleeper on the March? God, I'd have to look at my uh I'd have to look at my thing again. But I do yes. I think I did have uh Virginia Tech getting to at least the sweet sixteen if I remember. Hey. Exactly. Hey, I'm telling you, the LSU's first two were got, too pretty. LSU's got a path to the Sweet 16. I think they, and I think Virginia Tech was in the same um, bracket as Baylor, maybe. 
I love that. That's my. So that's I think I had also, that's also want to say. I want to give a shout out to Lance Beal, one of our sponsors. I have my Lance Beal spite bet of the week or of the day of the tournament is I hate Baylor. <laughs> Baylor has screwed me all year. So I am taking Baylor not to cover. I am taking Norfolk State to cover the 21 and a half points against the, Bay- against the Baylor Bears. That is what I want to do. I also want to get in some of these spread pools because spread pools, I love spread pools. Keeps me locked into all the games. Keeps you locked into the 16 seeds, 16 one games because if they cover the spread, Good it's my know. team. They Good cover. I get the I get the number one seed, and that's yes. what I want. But the beauty yes. about this, I don't think there's one team in March Madness right now that's like, like dominant. Dominant. Like no, I, I, I think there's so much there's so much parity in, in basketball this year that like there's not like a dominant. I know Gonzaga's the one overall seed, but like. They're good. I will They're say great. this: I, I do think a team like uh, like Kentucky in a March Madness situation could. Well, could they have do. they have great guard play, and a dominant center. In a dominant center, that's huge on both sides of the ball. Yeah, too, and, which and, is center, what and the center doesn't get in too much foul trouble. He gets. That's what I'm saying. He's never been out re- this whole season. In a, in a he tournament, has rebound everybody in a tournament where like points are at a premium and possessions are like at premiums, like that type of play, like it'll it lasts. I do think no that doubt. They, that they're in a good situation. I think they're gonna be good. They don't they don't shoot the threes well, but they don't need to. I think that they uh I just I don't, I don't I'm always like not on Kentucky, but I should always be on Kentucky. I'm not on Duke. No, I'm not either. I'm not on I Duke. I can see him year. getting to sweet sixteen, but I am not on him. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm not, not on, on him as a real player. No, 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 me either. I uh situation's too big, man. They, every game is they're thinking, hey, it's gonna be Coach K's last play, but just ends up be, it becomes too much. Yeah. Because I mean, see, I, mean, I guess Gonzaga is the, the the team that I, I mean, I, I picked them to win it the last three years, and they can't win it for me. I do it because of Bo. I do it because I don't my, remember my who, friend. I, 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 I got Gonzaga getting to the final four. I just don't know if I picked them to win it. I don't. You think, think I does does uh? I think I, do I, we go? Do we go to New Orleans for the final four? If I'm here, yeah, why not? I mean, why, why not? Go? Why not to New Orleans? You know who knows what's going on? Why not? Unless you ain't gone, probably, but I'll be there. How we were? How we doing over there? We working? The wheel didn't work. No, oh, no wheel. I no just grind that signed up for something. I have the wheel made. Do you want me to spin it? Yeah, spin it. We'll do the spin. The wheel. We don't have the graphic, but we have a what's for lunch wheel that we're going to do really the cool. The choices were Romans, chimes, curbside, or fills. Boom. Where'd it go? Romans Cafe. Romans wow. Romans Cafe. Okay, Romans Cafe. What's for lunch brought to you by Does Eat Place is we are going to go with Romans for lunch today, which can never go wrong with a little Greek and Lebanese food, a little chicken and rice, a little hummus. What? Huh? Huh? And then... Uh, yeah, we have we're gonna have our betting graphics on Twitter, and we will go from there, and you'll be able to see what we're gonna do. This is what it gave me. This is what it farted out. Oh, uh, that didn't work. No, it didn't. But it's I tried. Okay. We tried. We worked on it. We're working on different. I'll work things. on it more. We're working on different things. We'll keep working on it. And our guest picks graphics will be up on Instagram social. On Instagram socials. Tw- Instagram socials. Twitter. And Twitter. Bryant plus three, which is tonight. Basketball. These this, are our, these are from our guy. These are from our guy. Official picks. And Bryant cool. is the what you talk about curtain call. Oh, there's your curtain this call. This is him, the guy that leads the nation in scoring. Plays for Bryant. He got him into the tournament. They absolutely wiped the floor with somebody, 82 to 40 to get him in. He dropped 40. Peyton Kiss, I think is his name, something like that. Regardless, he Kiss? caused he caused a riot. At their, they played the game. Real, at like a real riot. They had Bryant. Yeah, they had to whisk the team off the floor. They couldn't finish. Wow. And they had to oh, bring I did. everybody I back yeah, on yeah, the yeah. court. So I didn't realize he was current, the one that giving current okay. call to a riot guy. Yeah, I mean, I like the intensity. I like the this energy. Is, he was has pres- no, yeah. you know, Lori likes to start a pot. That's a typical for his current call. This man call. was making a, making layups and doing push ups on the ground while the team was still playing. He was just, it's about me today. Ah, that's tough. That's a tough look. Tough look. But if you're if you're going the NCAA tournament, you're only going to go once. He's been to like three different schools. He's probably kind of like not a good guy. Probably like not a good locker room guy. But here we are. I'm in bed with him. And Bryant plus three. Not literally in bed with him. No. I mean, I Just be. in the betting world. Notre Dame, money line. And then we have a parlay with the Nuggets and NBA and Calgary Flames. And what was the last bet that he just gave us? <sighs> Soccer. Juventus? Villarreal. <laughs> For real, under two and a half. <laughs> <For real. laughs> under two and a half. So take that oh, one. Yeah. Take that for what it's worth. Oh, hey, soccer and hockey, dude. That's if he's if he's throwing soccer and hockey, he I seems like he's pretty confident in that. Um, I my my curtain call. And this is a few days late, but my curtain call. And we don't give enough props to women's teams around LSU. 
is the softball team. LSU Tigers softball team. They took two out of three from Alabama this weekend. Alabama's a top two team in the country. So they have, it's a big series win for them. I think the, the, the girls over there are, are balling out. I heard, heard some good stuff going on. They're both playing. Softball and baseball are playing at the same time yesterday. You saw Kim Mulkey went to both games. She was at the softball game for a little bit, then went to the baseball game for a little bit. I think she's addicted to competition. I think Kim Mulkey's just gonna she's gonna be the governor of Louisiana. She needs to coach the men's basketball team. I think she'd team. be a great governor of Louisiana. Who, Kim? Kim. Or just be the men's basketball coach. This is um this is who you have to worry about. I mean that guy's, I feel like if there was that ever, guy's a menace. If there was if there was ever a woman that could coach men's, men's team, Her. I think Kim could do it. No doubt. I think she'd gain the respect to everybody, but I have a doctor's appointment at three, three, at, at three minutes. You what? I have a doctor's appointment in three minutes. Do you really? Yeah. It's you should virtual. have told me that before that. It's virtual. I'm just saying now. Oh, oh okay. Need. Well, you got to go. I got a haircut at 30 and 30 minutes. Oh, well, there we go. Are you so, same haircut as last time? Same place. Same know. time? No, same time. No, same time. But what a show. Great show. show. Love show. Good day. Like, Good subscribe. Chad. Thank, Chad. Thanks nice again to Chad day. for coming. Like, subscribe. Tell your friends. We're promoting Fred's Friday. We are having Fred's Friday. First weekend of the SEC play. We'll be at Fred's. Weather will be great. Thank God it won't be cold. Not going to be raining. A lot of action on TV. A lot of betting going on. Come out, support the boys. Come out, have some drinks. Let's have some fun. Get lubed up for the big baseball game. Get lubed up for the basketball game. Watch the game going on. Let's all win some money together. Please come out. Show up for us. Cheer us on. Boo us off the stage. Whatever you want to do. All of it. Just be there. Any, any publicity is All good reaction is welcome. Yes. Bring it on. Love you all. Have a great uh, rest of the week. Love. Love, love, love. Love everywhere. Love, love, love. Love is love. Love, love. love is love. love. Uh, happy hump day. And enjoy the rest of the week. Happy Thank you all. See you. Uh, You're listening to Mike Up brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Sterling Automotive.